Father, by the hand, just begin to pray and worship in your heavenly prayer language. We magnify you and bless your holy name. Let's spend a couple of moments building ourselves up, praying in the Holy Ghost. If you don't pray in spirit, pray in tongues. You can just worship the Lord, add your agreement by saying thank you and hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice. Yes, Yanama. Ben, now worship the Lord in the spirit. Begin to pray in the spirit and pray in the understanding. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord God. We build up ourselves, O Lord God, by praying in the Holy Ghost. We will pray in the spirit, we will pray with our understanding, we will sing in the spirit, and we will sing with our understanding. Let me see on the Koya Mahashe, one Hongo and a Mahashe, Sibianga, Obra Sanya, Shout out to the Lord, Most High. If you believe you receive what you have prayed, let's rejoice with the angels and give God thanks and praise. Blessed be your holy name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, O Father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father God, for being the God of the breakthrough. Thank you for giving us weapons of warfare that are invisible. Oh, Lord God, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, enabling us to break through anything, oh, Lord, that the enemy would attempt to place over our heads. Thank you, oh, Lord God. We bless and honor you. We magnify you. Thank you, oh, Lord God. Creating us clean hearts, oh, God, so that we can give all of our hearts unto you. 
create in us clean hearts so that we might not sin against you. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for being our Father. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for not forsaking us and leaving us. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for being a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. Thank you for the comfort of the Holy Spirit this morning who has engaged our hearts and minds through the power of the Spirit, O oh Lord God, and has opened our eyes and our ears and illuminated our minds and our hearts to receive the engrafted Word of God. Thank you, Father, for every person that has joined us this morning. We thank you that every hindrance is broken, that the same Spirit in here, O oh Lord God, is with our online audience on this morning. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We count this a good day and an excellent day, O oh Lord God, for us to come together again to the house of the Lord to give you praise and glory and honor. So we magnify you, O oh Lord God, and thank you for this day. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Give one more shout out to the Lord if you believe that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Give someone a high five or a hug. Tell them you're glad to see them this morning. And you may be seated. down front Marlon come on down front feel this empty seat I need a microphone oh there it is hallelujah thank you Jesus there's anointing that's flowing in here God's presence is flowing so strong but the young lady Right here, could you come in right here on the end? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor, can I step down? Yeah. Yes. Are you asking me questions? Yeah, because I, I ain't know if I need to be here. Oh, oh, I got you. Thank you. You can stand right here for me. As you be as we just embraced, the Lord wanted you to know that there's a new anointing that's coming upon your life. I could see you in the realm of the spirit, but I saw God doing surgery on your heart from the heartbreak. God needs you to know that he's a healer and that he will heal you in those hurt places. But today, a new anointing flows upon you, a new call God is calling you to. He's calling you to a place of purity. He's calling you to a deeper place within him. So be free today. The song said, Give him your heart. Give him all of it. Let it all go in the name of Jesus. There's new beginnings awaiting you. Do you receive the new beginnings today? Reach our hands out towards her. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you for this new journey that she will start today in the name of Jesus. Lord, that she will not look back, that she will press forward to the high calling of you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you that the plans that you have for her life will blow her mind in the name of Jesus. From this day forth, she will never be the same. God, we thank you for your anointing that's Jesus. flowing from her, from Bless the crown of her head name. to the sole of her feet, God. God. As she opened up your word, Father God, that it would begin to come alive to her in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for divine revelation God I thank you for giving her divine knowledge in the name of Jesus divine discernment in the name of Jesus God we thank you for a new anointing release on her life of power and authority God we thank you for it right now in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah thank you father I said I love thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory, hallelujah. The lady right here in front of you. You can be for a second. Right here, the one with the gold on. Yes, you. She's looking around, but I'm looking right at her. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How you doing? God transitioning you. I see a move coming in your life. I can't see whether it's spiritual or natural, but God said a move of God is hitting your life today. All the pain, I don't know what this is today. It's a lot of pain, but God don't desire for you, daughter, to carry the pain rested in him. Are you ready for what God is going to do? Do you believe that he's going to do just what he said he's going to do? It's, it's like not you. You have several things that you've been believing God for. And it seemed like those things just haven't been moving. But God said they will move and you will see the sign of a moving this week. And you will know that he is God Almighty. You will know that he is the great I am. So when Satan comes to attack your mind, to let you feel like it will not work, it's not going to happen, where you tell him that I have heard from the great I am and no weapon formed against me, it shall not prosper. He didn't say it won't form. He's going to form it, but it's not going to prosper. You already have the victory. In the name of Jesus, reach our hands out toward her. Lord, I thank you today also for your daughter, God. Lord, I thank you that every pain and hurt that she has suffered, God, she will feel no more in the name of Jesus. God, every enemy that rises head up against her, I cut it down from asunder in the spirit in the name of Jesus. No weapon, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. God, I thank you that you build the shield of protection around her the same way that you protected Joe God. I think that you will protect her. I thank you that you protect everyone that's connected to her in the name of Jesus. Receive my anointing and my love, God. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, God, that's a complete healing in the name of Jesus. Complete healing in the name of Jesus. Give God praise in here. Stand up to your feet and honor the most high because yeah. the anointing is here thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah today is the day of healing for anyone who needs it today is the day of God's anointing over your life receive his anointing today receive it today it is for you if you take it God say you can have it it is yours to take give God praise in the house today hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Father Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Amen, amen. Say, today is my day. Thank you, Father. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. You know, the Lord is always working on your behalf, even while you're in sin, even before you're saved. You know, he said that the goodness of God causes you to repent. I say that because, you know, this, the Lord knows how to, you've got to just, you have to learn to trust God. Live right and trust God, and he will direct you into what you need to at the proper moment. You know, a young lady over here, the first lady that was ministered to, you know, um, you know, it just so happened that I uh, ran into her. Had left, had to take something to the car. Just so happened I ran into her in the parking lot, helped to get situated in Children's Church. 
and then um, and then the head usher, he asked me, he said, you think it's okay if I just sit her right next to Lisa? I was like, mm-hmm, that's a trick. <laughs> that means the Holy Spirit got something for her. Yeah, that's a man. The Lord will put you right next to who you need to be next to, you know. And so uh, we thank God for that. The Bible talks about how the prophetic ministry is for the purpose of exposing the secrets of our heart. You know, and a lot of times we all, you know, we all go through different battles. And sometimes if that, the Bible says hope deferred can make the heart sick. So if what you've been asking of God for, if you believe in him for, or, or if you were done wrong in the past and that's not rectified in your time frame, you can begin to lose hope. And so then, the, and, and then, uh, and when you typically, when we lose hope, we don't really share it with anybody. You know, we don't, cause it makes us feel, it doesn't make you feel, it doesn't make you weak. It makes you feel weak. And you know, I just don't want to share this, you know, and then sometimes you shared it with people and they misdiagnosed it, gave you wrong information, beat you up, the list goes on and on. And so, and then at the right moment, the Holy Spirit will use many a times a stranger to, uh, to pull you out, to expose the secrets of it, your heart for the purpose of knowing that he didn't, you knowing that he didn't forget about you. And then the, to, if your hope is getting a little bit weak, he then resurrects that hope, you know. And so, uh, so we thank God for that. So, amen, amen. Yes, it's always a wonderful thing. Always. I get a big kick out of it. Don't ever pay attention to me laughing up here. I get a big kick out of people who, you know, when you point to them, they're like, she can't be talking to me. She can't be talking to me. And, and then that goes from, oh, she talking to me. And then, and then they come down and they're like, oh man, what she get ready to say? You know, and it goes from doubt and unbelief to this. Oh, she hit me right in the heart, Jesus. Oh, thank you. I love that. I love that because it's the Holy Spirit using somebody of integrity to break down your defenses, to put a word in your heart that you need in order to make it. So we thank God for that. Amen. All right, let's jump into the word for today. I just want to share something with you just maybe for a minute. You know, there is a, uh, I don't want to call it an unbelievable, but there is a very, very uh, dynamic and powerful force that has come against me. And um, I know what it's over. Um, you know, if you do things the same, um, you know, if it's the right thing, it'll produce the right result. And the enemy can maybe try to get involved. They can adjust. They can, we know they're going to do early morning prayer. They're going to knock our defenses down. They get used to that. But sometimes if you do something different and new, um, you sidestep the devil. And then it can cause such a disturbance in the invisible realm, such a dynamic change, such a problem that they counter. Um, and, uh, and if you push too hard, they counter back very hard. Uh, most people um, are not kind of equipped to deal with that type of uh, psychological effect. It's very, very difficult to deal with. Um, every fiber of your being tries to break. It's a huge force that comes against you. It's very mysterious. And so uh, that has happened. And so, uh, you know, I know it's around Wednesdays because it's just that Wednesday thing. Um, yeah, everybody put your phones on vibrate. And so uh, that Wednesday thing is uh, very difficult, very hard um, before and after now. You know, it's hard before, it's hard during, and then, and so then I got hit with something that Thursday, and it's very, it's very diabolical in nature. Don't, uh, I, I know what it is, but I don't quite know what it is. I just know it's from the dark side. Only time I've kind of really felt that way before was, uh, was that time we were ministering to the young lady that you all know who I'm talking about, and um, an army from below had come and surrounded our home. I had never felt evil like that before. Most people have never felt evil. Trust me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, let me tell you something. When you actually have raw evil in front of you, your mind will think about death. You think about death. You'll even wonder, am I getting ready to die in this situation um, because of the, the type of evil that we have dealt with and encountered? Um, you know, but, you know, Jesus made it clear that I give you power and authority over them all nothing shall by any means hurt you but it doesn't mean you won't feel like you're going to be hurt and so a uh, boldness and courage is doing that um in the face of opposition and so uh, so it's nothing to get alarmed about i'm just warning you because i'm going to assume that i'm not just feeling the effect 
others won't feel the effect. They'll just keep on half stepping. Um, and uh, you know, there, you know, if you're not strong, then the enemy does not take. It doesn't take much effort to hold you down. You, we can just see by the way that you practice things. You're not diligent. You're not consistent. You're not faithful. And so they got you there, and they just kind of push a button, and yeah, they're not going to do the right thing. You know, but when, when you press and you press hard, particularly a ministry of this nature and what we teach, um, sometimes they press back, you know. One of my favorite lines in the movies is uh, there was a movie called Hellboy. And, um, you know, there was uh, this group, they went to find out about all of these guys that had these strange giftings and powerful giftings. And they were introduced, you know, and I remember one guy, I think he, he was like a fish or something. He was a human fish. You know, it gets really weird. But, uh, and uh, when he introduced himself, he, he introduced by saying this. He said, there are some things that go bump in the night. He said, but we are the ones that bump back. And so what you'll find is, is that with this type of warfare, it's, uh, we bump them and they bump back. You know, we bring damage to them, and they try to figure out a way to bring damage back. It's a tit for tat, you know. And so, uh, so you know, I'm going to make I'm, every, the format is going to stay the same, you know. But I'm going to be using um, more of the ministers to on that night maybe have someone leading prayer every 15 minutes, or maybe nah, maybe leading prayer every 30 minutes to keep that momentum. Because the first the first uh, goal of the dark side during prayer is to introduce in your midst the spirit of slumber. Um, and how they do that is that they don't just stand up here while you're praying. They do that stuff too. But, they, um, but the first thing they try to get you to do is disengage by sitting down. I'll always remember this. The first rule to try to get you to disengage is, is sitting down because it's much easier to fall asleep sitting down than it is standing up. <laughs> now, I have one individual that we're going to nameless. When they are at prayer, this person... They hang on. But when I tell you they fight, they, they be sitting up there like. <laughs> I have to not look at that individual because it's hilarious because that person is fighting, standing up. They, and they, they come over here and they hold on to stuff and they, they going down and, and they, you know, it's hilarious. I should stop. I'm supposed to be praying, right? You know, so but so I'm just going to let you know, you know, just brace yourself for that. Um. There are some things that uh, forces that can come against you. And, you know, I was, I'm, I'm going to say something. And, you know, the Lord has answered my questions. i got to remind me to tell you about this other guy I'm listening to. Um, but uh, he mentioned something that I thought was so powerful. For, for some of you that come out of, like, the World of Faith Circles, we remember the book God's Generals. You know what I'm talking about? And God's Generals, um, it's a book written by a man who who sadly enough turned to the dark side. Um, written by, see, see, this is what I mean by you, you start fooling with high level stuff, high level stuff comes after you. And without, without, without and, and the more gifted and powerful we are, the more we have to be humble and meek and submitted to the word and not thinking we anything. You know, because that's why most, most of God's generals fell by the wayside. Many of them died sick, broke. Um, one I think was in an insane asylum. Um, Al they became alcoholics, and you know, y'all remember that stint where Mel Gibson seemed like he went crazy for a moment after he made the Passion of the Christ. See, you do high-level things, and do you realize how many people gave their life to Christ after the Passion of the Christ? So you do a high-level thing, and then a high-level thing comes after you to try to make you a low-level thing, so that you can't do another high-level thing. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, but he said something that I thought was very, very powerful. He said, he said, when it comes to God's generals, he said, that book is only half true. He said, because the only folk that y'all talked about in the book was pretty much in North America. He said, nobody interviewed the generals over there in India and Africa who were on a higher level than your generals. He said, because authority is meted out based on the level of darkness that you are in. They said, we are in a deeper darkness. That's why we have a greater authority, not because we're better, but because we're deeper. See? So, there are, so the fact, here's the problem, is that those on that side of the planet um, got to the higher level because they were connected to us. That's a simple fact. They learned the basic principles of faith and different things like that from us. So there's a turnaround going on now where 
where the Lord is trying to get a few boys from America to connect to them. Let me tell you something. It is obvious to a few of us that God has put the next level, not in Africa, but in Nigeria. So that only those who are humble enough to bypass what the world calls a third world country will get the diamonds that are in that mine. So, so we don't, I don't know where this is going. I really don't. It's going someplace. I mean, y'all know it's going someplace. You know, but, but, but what's scary, though, is, is that they came and got it from us. They, and now the Lord got us going over there to get it from them and to bring that weight and authority back over here that they operate in over there where you then got to fight both sides, the one in America and the ones over there. So just be sensitive and just be careful to your attitude, your character. Husband and wives, be very, very careful because the enemy, he, he sidesteps things. He tries to get you off of things by getting you involved and, and be careful about, you know, new ideas and new people that show up in your life. And, and I'm not saying all of this is wrong. I'm just saying you have to be careful. You know, hey, for y'all that are single, you got to be careful about that new man or that new young lady you just met. They nice. Mm-hmm. So is Dracula. Y'all got me. So we're probably going to keep that momentum up. Let me tell you something. Today, it's always been this way, but you got to be very careful because whatever sin you're living in is going to be used against you. And, and here's another one. For us that are, that are not actively living in sin, um, whatever um, weakness you have in your mentality will be exploited by the dark side. Okay, so the, the Bible says all of these things about walking in love. Any part of that you don't do, you have fueled the dark side to come into your life as an inroad to cause certain things to happen. We really got to be on point in these last days, really, because, you know, when 84% of the churches in America are stagnant or going in the opposite, direct, uh, opposite direction, well, guess what then? Leave them alone. They already broke and going down to the ground. So guess what? Pull every demon in the United States and focus on the other small percent. Because if 84 percent are stagnant and going down, then that means probably another 10 percent on top of that are just barely squeaking. And then add another 5 percent to that. And the reason why they're growing is, let me, is because of Cardinal. Let me tell you something, y'all. I got a wardrobe. Let me leave this thing alone. That's all right. At least I'm not John Travolta and got it all the way down. Got to put some different buttons on it. Um, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Um, I may have forget what I was going to say, man. <laughs> All right, let me just get off that. Let me just get off that. So, you know, it's very, very important for us to, us to be on point. There are things coming. I, let me I'll add one more. Then let me tell you, everybody say opinion. opinion. Um, now, I could be dead wrong. I kind of feel like we are in a small window of... Uh, I kind of feel like the real mayhem is going to start or not based on um, the presidency over the next year and a half. Um, because whoever is in office will determine which doors are closed and which ones are opened. Okay, which ones are closed, which ones are opened. You know, so you're going to see a whole lot of stuff that's blown out of proportion with both sides, whether it be Biden, whether it be, you know, um, there's, we have a circle right now of Biden. They're talking about Trump running. They're talking about DeSantis. Is it DeSantos or DeSantis? DeSantis. Um, and, and don't get caught up in what the news tells you about these individuals. Just don't. Um, you know, even with this thing with uh, the FBI going into Trump's house. They, y'all, it was simple. They wondered if he had, by mistake, took some documents home. And, you know, Trump, he ain't going to cooperate with you easily if he doesn't like you. And so they decided to just break into his home. And more and more, the government is just trying to take our rights away. Take our rights away. You're going to break into the president of the United States' home, the next one? You know, if they're going to break. Watch this. If they break into his, uh, don't be surprised when they start breaking into yours. So, you know, don't just caught up. You know, he must be hiding something. <sighs> so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm pretty sure that both sides will give me enough gasoline to start a barbecue and enough ammunition to preach in the future. Would y'all agree? Amen. But brace yourself. Right now, everyone and everything is trying to reposition themselves for the end. 
everything that you see it's a repositioning the mayhem the craziness the up the down the war between it's always two sides to everything now it's 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 and it's always trying to re, it's trying to reposition itself so but how I many you know no matter what we going up so yeah. they can do whatever they want to do i don't care if bugs bunny is in office i'm still going higher Amen. i mean i want god's man in office but the other side if it's the wrong man gets in yeah, well, that's that's the lord's problem i'm good okay and so uh but it's just it's just interesting but all right so you know we we're on the month of healing oh <laughs> i cracked myself up reminded myself of stuff i got so i think what i'm think what i'm going to do this is a security person's nightmare what i'm getting ready to do by the way oh no it's not bad it's just i mean you got to remember you know the you know like Stevan, she's over the like the business side of the church her job is to make sure that I don't end up on the news. Because <laughs> I did something wrong, you know, by accident. Sometimes you see preachers go to jail for embezzlement, but they didn't know it was embezzlement. They just didn't know, you know. And, and so uh, a lot of preachers end up in trouble. So she makes sure. So as a result of that, you know, I might be like, Stevon, this right here is not that deep. We just need to just bypass this. And she's like, nope. Boom, 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 boom. That's her job. Well, the job of security is to make sure that Osama bin Laden doesn't raise from the dead and come up here and try to blow us up or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, not every person. You know, I learned this from you to put wherever the sons of God are, so the sons of Satan are also trying to blend in like sons of God. You know, so typically we know things about the spirit, but that's security's job, you know, to let us know. You know, for example, the lady, is that lady here? The lady with the little cute dog, is she here? Ah, oh, there she is back there. <laughs> so when she came in, you know, she came in with the, 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 the little small dog. And so his job is to say, hey, don't be alarmed. There's a lady in the audience. She has a small dog. It's a service dog. You already talked to her. You know, I let her know that the dog just get to yapping and saying amen. She may have to step out. So that's their job is to let me know that. I said all that to say that I believe what we are supposed to do is um, open up. Can I put this? When you saw Jesus preached, one of the things that you noticed about Jesus and the disciples is that they were constantly being interrupted. They were interrupted by people who at that moment, their faith kicked on. And so, so I don't want you to be embarrassed, you know, so if I could, because, you know, the stuff that we teach and things that we're going down, you know, I can say, I can make one statement it corrects your erroneous doctrine. And then the light kicks on. And at that moment, you got faith to be healed. So if, you, if that kicks in for you at that moment, what you should do is you should get up, step over to the aisle so one of us can lay hands on you. But you preaching, mm -hmm, so was Jesus. He didn't mind being interrupted. It was the people around him that had a problem with him being interrupted. The blind man shouted out, shut up! They brought the kids. He ain't got time for y'all. And Jesus had to always correct the people around him. He didn't mind being interrupted because he was like, this is not a religion. This is a lifestyle of me trying to minister to family people. So we got to get out of this religious, which we never really are in too much too anyway. It's the difference between professionalism and excellence. Well, professionalism, you know, is based on you not making a mistake. Excellence is what you do when you make a mistake. So we, gotta, we have to have this open culture based on where we're going where I don't, because I mean, you know, how, how many of you have got something from God at the moment and 20 minutes later lost it? My wife and I, Iron Sharp and I, we'll be sitting up having a conversation, y'all, and I'll never forget this. My wife and I were having a conversation, and it has something to do with why men do something a particular way. And while we were talking back and forth, the Lord gave me such an answer that it both blew us away. And today, I cannot remember what he told me because I didn't write it down. So we want to make sure that we maximize our results by getting more of our, into how Jesus is doing it. Let me tell you something. Is your, if your sermon is so illustrious that you just can't be interrupted, that's not a good sermon. You're being too professional. Jesus knew how to pick back up where he left off. You know what I'm saying? And if I forgot that point, well, hey, it's just going to be forgotten because this person got healed. So I think what we need to do is, as we are preaching, now what, that's what we're not going to do. And we're not, I'm not faulting anybody else is doing this. I had no idea I'm planning on giving this long commercial. We, we're, now, we don't do orphans in the service, okay? And so it's for a reason, so we can have freedom to talk about my three and four commercials. <laughs> and moves to the spirit. Okay, but we're not going to do the ways is that 
you know, we're not going to get over into, you know, you getting up in the service and placing money up here. I don't want to get over into that because the Bible says about money, don't let your left hand know what your right hand does. So give in secret and the Lord will reward you openly. Okay. Um, and so, but when it comes to, and that's why you don't see anything in Jesus' lifestyle and Jesus' ministry, you don't any see anything about people giving them offerings except for this one particular scripture said a large amount of people followed him and constantly gave him, gave him his wealth. But you don't see these games in the midst of what Jesus did. Matter of fact, you see him acting a fool in the temple, <laughs> beating people and turning stuff over. You know, so, but in the realm of healing, we have to allow for people who got it at that moment and are bold enough to get up. When you get it at that moment, all you got to do is get up, stand there, lift your hands, and we'll just come over, just lay hands on you according to your faith, be it unto you right now, and you can go back to your seat. I think that'll be a wonderful thing. Because it's trying to be professional, we're trying to make sure that people get it. Because if you got it at that moment and that window is open in your heart, we want to do it now so that by the time service is over with, Satan has not tricked you. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it's always somebody like, oh, no, I can't do anything like that. It's always somebody like, mm, let my heart open up. He told me I could do it. Now, remember, don't be, going, don't be getting up with dumb stuff, you know. Yeah, you always got to say that because it's always one. But I'm, I'm, that's very, very serious. I mean, there have been times when any of you been in the service and something was shared and the light turned on so bright, you didn't hear the rest of the sermon. Your, your heart opened up. OK. And so so we're going to open that up so that whenever we're ministering and we'll keep that on. The, we have to keep reminding people whenever your heart is open, when we're ministering along these lines. If you believe that the Lord has has triggered your heart and it's you remember. You remember that guy, it says Paul, and I don't know if it's Paul, one of the disciples was preaching, and, and it says while he was preaching, it says there was a man in the audience that was looking intently at him, intently. And it says Paul perceived that the man was looking like that because his faith had kicked on to be healed. And then he spoke a word and got the man healed. But he had to perceive. I ain't got time to be perceiving. You might be looking because you left your glasses at home, you know, something. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And so, so, but if we allow you, if something has really kicked on, you're like, you know what, Lord, I want hands laid upon me right now. I'll stop, I'll stop ministering and do it. Or I may say, Randall, step over here, God, or anybody, you know, because it's not our power. It's your faith to kick it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So speaking of that, let's start, let's go ahead and jump into this. Hebrews chapter one, you know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. I don't know when we talked about this. We talked about it's God's perfect will for you to be healed. What I preached on Wednesday night. That was, a, that was a pretty good teaching because it showed how Jesus had to manifest stuff in the midst of chaos constantly. The same way that you're going to have to learn how to ignore all of the mess with your kids and your spouse and your family members and the job and, in order to manifest stuff. It's based on faith. It's not based on chaos. So we're going to read something here. This is called the Hebrews. I mean, <laughs> this is called the Faith Hall of Fame. We have nicknamed it that. Well, remember. What you're reading didn't end at the end of the Bible. The Faith Hall of Fame is still being written. Names are still being added to that list about the men who brought it in planet Earth. These are not preachers. These are regular people. So your name can be added to that list as a regular person, and your name can be taken from that list, and you got 50,000 members at your church. God, God, if you notice, God rec records exploits, not numbers. Ooh, Jesus, this is going to be good. Ooh, yeah, but my time, let's go. Hebrews 1, no, I'm sorry, 11, 4 through 5. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, is still speaking. By faith, Enoch, was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because God translated him to heaven for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God Hebrews eleven seven. 7 it was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood he obeyed God who warned him about things that had never happened so remember in Noah's day it had never rained that's why they thought he was crazy he's like it's getting ready to rain from above and it's like Dude, you out of order. You talking about an event that's going to happen that's never happened before. 
So that's why part of the reason why they didn't believe him. And so by his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world. and He received the righteousness that comes by faith. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and to go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. So, yes, there are times when the Lord will send you to a place and he won't tell you why. He will just tell you to go the same way that when he told me to go to Atlanta, he didn't tell me for what. When he sent me to Atlanta, I assumed that the church that I was at was maybe in the future going to open up a satellite church and they maybe might put me over it. I assumed that's the reason why the Lord sent me here. Okay, so many times the Lord would, and let me tell you something. I said I wasn't, I better be careful with what I say I'm not going to do. Sometimes, this is my corner will explain it. Sometimes the Lord will get you to a place early and make you wait there for a while. You're like, man, the Lord sent me here. Yeah, he just needed to make sure he got you there early because if he told you at the last minute, you would miss the window because you moved too slow. <laughs> so sometimes he'll, whole wardrobe, boys. Janet Jackson speared up in this piece <laughs> on my clothes. That's all right. I should not have even said that, friends. See, I just realized what I said. The whole world was like, stop. Okay. Everything coming up loose, but that's all right. You got to. So what was I saying? Um, oh, yes. So God will get you to a place. Oh, God will get you to a place early. And um, um, because he knows that we can be a little bit slow. So I'm going to get you there early. And you won't know why you're just sitting there and the bus hasn't come. I think it's better for me to get you there way before the bus gets there. Versus I tell you too late, and because of how slow you move, you miss the bus. Y'all got me? Okay. So, you know, I'll just do it this way. Hebrews 11, 11. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child. Though she was barren and was too old, she believed that God would keep his promise. Same way God is going to keep his promise to you. Amen. Hebrews, this is all by faith now. This is called the Faith Hall of Fame. This is, now watch this. The faith, God's intention was for the Faith Hall of Fame to have every person's name in it that was born in the planet. These are just the ones who took him seriously, some of them. Hebrews eleven seventeen. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promise, was ready to sacrifice his only son. Now, that won't happen again. God is not going to ask you to sacrifice your child, okay? And he, didn't, he ended up not having to sacrifice him. That was, a, it, that was a deeper issue where in order for the Lord to do something in the planet, somebody else has to do it first. So if Abraham, if I can convince you to kill your only son and you were going to go through it, that means I'm allowed to kill my only son. That's what that was about. But that's a whole different teaching. Verse 18, even though God told him, Isaac is the son through your descendants, whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back to life because he had already seen it. That's very important. We're going to get over to that next weekend. It's about the process of how you visualize your results. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons. Verse 21, it was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. Verse 23, it was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. <laughs> the movies doesn't show you all of that. For he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger and kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. That's another law of faith. 
keeping your eyes on the one you can't see. How can I see him if he's invisible? That's a different teaching. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. But when the Egyptians tried to do the same thing, they were all drowned. It was by faith then that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people, see, I like this because it's not religious. It's talking about lifestyle stuff. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, that's Daniel, quenched the flames of fire, the three Hebrew boys, and escaped death by the age of, edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from, uh, turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Hebrews 11:39. All these people, it didn't say all of these preachers, all of these people, it didn't say all of these prophets and apostles, it said all of these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God promised because God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. It's an insane scripture, man. That's an insane scripture. That has a lot of implications. Number one, it says, now by faith, they did what y'all did. No, by faith, they did what they did, and y'all think it's impossible to do it. But y'all have more to, than them to be able to do more than them, and based on what you do is going to determine what they get, even though they're in heaven. That's, that's a lot of responsibility. I'm not only going to tell you to look at your neighbor because it might be a spouse. Just say, get yourself together. Somebody might have had a disagreement this morning <laughs> and said that. <laughs> Get yourself together. And then I say it. Oh, see, it's a confirmation. I told you. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is um, remember, I'm doing this as a series so that in the future, people that are sick, have disease or whatever, I can point, we can point them to this series. And then when their faith is built, then they can come and receive hands laid upon you don't want to just be so quick to lay hands on people unless you sense they really have faith. The same way that people, people always tell me I need prayer. What do you need me to pray about? Then when they tell me, nine times out of ten, they don't need prayer. Like I said, a young man, newer to the church at the Sunday location, he said, I need prayer about my finances. I'm trying to go up. I got this business, but I need prayer. I said, well, I don't do religious prayers. I said, because money doesn't answer the prayer. <laughs> if it did, you have all of these scriptures to talk about praying for money in the Bible. I said, your business has to do with you creating a vision board. Write the vision. Make it plain so that you can run as you read it. Speak over the vision every single day. Yes, you can pray in the spirit, but you need wisdom and you need, dis you need dis discipline. Okay? And so, so it, because what happens is sometimes people create a business and they say the Lord told them to do it. No, he didn't. You, you told you to do it. Because anything the Lord tells you to do is going to work. And let me tell you something, when you start a business, you have to be care Christians have to be very careful because we start a business based on religious things and you get in your mind. Uh, well, I, here, here we go. The Lord told me to start a business making coffee cups with scriptures on them. Okay, wonderful. But you may not become a millionaire with a coffee cup that has a scripture on it. You know, well, I can go right to Google and get 100 million coffee cups with scriptures on them. Well, the Lord told me to make baby dolls. I don't know if he told you that. There's a lot of Chucky reruns out here going on right now. <laughs> you have to be careful. A lot of times, see, this is what, how many know God is good? Yeah, so the problem that is, is that every time you get a good idea, you think it's God. 
and you're a good idea, watch this. It might be a good idea. It just might not make you any money. And then there are some of us that, you know, you, you, know, you know what you need to be careful of? You better be very, very careful when everyone around you thinks you should do something to make money. And you're like, and you know you should, but you're like, uh, I don't know if I really want to do that. Everybody says, if you went into business, see, God can only go so far. And a lot of Christians, we miss out on opportunities because we'd rather sell this over here instead of do this over here. This right, and it's so funny, we, we have the boldness to do what won't work but timid to do what will work. It's weird like that. You got to be very, very careful. That's why very few make it. And let me tell you something. If that idea is a huge money maker and the enemy knows you're going to do the right thing with that money and he knows it'll add finances to the kingdom and he knows it's going to bless your household and he knows you're going to bless people, poor people with it, and he knows it's going to help you build up rewards, the last thing he wants you to do is to have another kingdom business. A kingdom business is not a kingdom business because you got a kingdom name. Chick-fil-A ain't in the Bible. You little crazy chicken. You know, I went to the big chicken and started a little thing going around. I was like, you got to be kidding me when I first moved to Atlanta. I didn't even like Chick-fil-A, you know. But Chick-fil-A thrives because of what they do, not because of the title. I didn't mean to go down that line, so let's get back off that. We're not even talking about prosperity this morning. But it was a good word for somebody. So if the enemy knows that about you, what he's going to do is he's going to give you another idea that's good, just won't make any money. Because we, what, what I need to do is, I, oh, God, this must be for somebody here online. What I need to do is I need to keep you in the frequency. If you make this or create this, this is the one that you're really gifted at. Every time you do this or you create this, people are blown away. But for some reason, you don't want to do this. But this is the one that's going to make you a millionaire. And I'm the devil, I'm playing the devil. And I know what you're going to do with that money. You're going to do the right thing because money amplifies what you're already doing. If you're living in sin now, we give you more money, you're going to tend to you living in sin at a higher level. Okay? And, and so, so what I need to do is, is, and you'll never know it's evil. So what I need to do is I need to redirect you from this over to something else that's simpler. And it seems like a good idea, and it might even be something that people like. I'm going to redirect you to this because this right here will prevent you from being a millionaire. This right here will just allow you to sell it to 10 people. And it'll keep you in the mold of thinking that you're really building up the kingdom of God. Oh, I can see by the look on your face, I am saying something right here. This is convicting for somebody. That's why I keep, whenever I don't look at the audience, I just look up at the sky. I don't know what anything I'm talking about them. I don't even like looking into the camera. That's easier because I can't see the audience. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to really, when you, when you look at financial things, number one, do you have peace? Number two, oh, I was just sharing this with somebody else. Number two, you need to find out around the people around you. Do you actually think people are going to buy this? If your friends won't buy it, you might be in trouble. <laughs> Let me go on down another line here because as the old preachers say, you don't hear me. <laughs> All right. So y'all got that. Faith Hall of Fame. So now, faith operates a couple of different ways, a couple of different ways. It's very important because if, all, if, if God is very impressed by faith, you need to know what it is. So let's see the people that got healed by the faith of the person. Matthew 9, 28, they went right into the house where he was staying and Jesus asked them, do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. He never mentioned his power. Because of your faith, you, the responsibility is on you. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered her, dear woman, your faith is strong. What you desire will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was instantly set free from demonic torment. Mark 10, 51. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Mark 2, 4, 5. I just pulled out a few. 
They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus, seeing their faith. That was an issue of no man will tear through the roof of a building that does not belong to him unless he is being moved by what he believes. That's what it meant by, oh, I see y'all. I see you, I see you, I see you. So it says, seeing their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. You read the rest of that. You know, he had to argue with the religious people. He said, what difference does it make if I say your sins are forgiven or get up and be healed? But notice, he couldn't do anything. I mean, I want you to imagine I'm preaching to you all, and all of a sudden we hear noises. And everybody starts looking up. And all people are like, you have got to be kidding me. I bet you Jesus kept on preaching too. I bet you kept on preaching. He was looking. Well, we're going to find out what this is, but I'm going to keep on ticking here. I want you to think about that. The roof opens up, <laughs> and they lower a man right in front of me while I'm preaching. And Jesus didn't say nothing to the guys who broke up the roof. He said, I see your faith. Your sins are forgiven. You would have thought that the man, Jesus would have pulled people aside. He, this is what we would have done. We pulled and said, hey, man, now you out of order. You are out of order. You could have waited till the service was over. You could have made an appointment. You can't be just tearing up nobody's property. And one of the things that you found out about Jesus, when he operated in the supernatural, he was good for tearing folks stuff up. You remember that guy that had all of them pigs? The demon said, can we go in them? He said, yeah. He didn't say, no, that's another man's property. He didn't say, no, do what I say and go to the abyss. He didn't say, no, follow the first instruction. He said, sure. They can't sue me, so, you know. It's just strange. The Lord gave me a revelation about that, too, though. Lord, the revelation was, when you go back and read that story, now, you might have already know this, I don't know, because we're all learning. The revelation was of what they, what they, uh, the, the revelation with that story is um, what they were begging Jesus not to do. And they said that they kept on begging Jesus not to send them to the abyss, which is a hint that they fear going to that particular place. It also means that you can send them there. And if you bring that up, maybe you can get a deliverance quicker. And so because, you know, people always say, you know, you cast out demons instantly. No, you don't. Because you go back and read that. It says that they constantly kept begging Jesus, which means this is a back and forth constantly. You can't do something constantly in a matter of a couple of minutes. You know, they just constantly, he tell them to go and they're like, don't send us into a abyss. Don't send us into a abyss. And that's why they said, would you send us into the pigs? So my maybe revelation is that maybe he allowed them to go into the pigs because he was concerned with any type of way of getting them out of that man. Okay, so I don't want to struggle with this all day. So if y'all willing to go into the pigs, then go. It says they went into the pigs, and then they drove the pigs and, and killed all of the pigs in the sea. And then all the people in the city told Jesus, you got to go. <laughs> That's real ministry, y'all. See, what we want to do is we want to do a miracle, and everybody praises us. We want to do a miracle, and everybody is happy. We want to do a miracle, and, you know, they, they give us a badge and shake our hand and give you an offering so you can go out to eat and all that type of stuff. We want to thank you. But a lot of times, you're going to deal with some trouble if you actually get somebody healed for real. Okay, you might lay hands on somebody on the street and they get healed, and now the husband, you got to deal with him. Because he's mad. Because now he can't get that free check. I mean, you got to be ready for this type of stuff. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Ain't nothing like a healing in your money draw up that you were getting free. You, you, you got to be ready to deal with the anger of Watch this. He, and then you have this other side that I'm going to show you where it's not based on the faith of the person. It's based on your faith. Lord tells you to go hear him, heal a man at Walmart that's paralyzed and can't get up. He gets up. He got healed. Now he's mad at you. How can I prove to my government check that I uh, am still paralyzed? Now I got to go out here and get a job. You might think that's weird, but I've had about three cases of people who did not want to be healed so they could get a free check. One was a guy that had six kids. Mm -hmm. He did not, he was not interested in being healed. He liked living off that free money. 
So when you're out here fooling with this type of stuff, it's going to come with trouble sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you might want to be able to do what they do at the wedding. Is there anybody that disagrees with this wedding? Sometimes Is there anybody that disagrees with the fact that I'm about to heal this blind man? And this stuff works on the street ten times faster than it does work in the church. Y'all got me. Let's see here what verse. Go, just put the next verse up, then I'll remember where I am. <laughs> Maybe they don't remember either. Mark 5, 30. <laughs> Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone from him, so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? Which means, number one, Jesus did not know everything. Number two, this person got healing from him without his permission. Number three, it lets you know that there is power resident on the inside of you, and it can fold over into your garments. Looking at the crowd pressing around you, how can you ask, who touched me? That's what the disciple said. But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Now, I want you to imagine this. You got all of these people touching Jesus and nothing happens. But someone touched him the right way in a different frequency, frequency, and he did not see him. All he knew is something came out of him. She didn't touch him. She touched his clothes. But when she touched his clothes, it came out of him. He said, who did that? Whole crowd of people. Who did that? And nobody said anything. And the disciples said, dude, what'd you, all these people touching you, why would you even ask a question like that? He said, no, I know it's a bunch of people touching me. He said, but something came out of me, so somebody did something. I'll read it from here. Next verse. But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened. Mm. She came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. Next verse. And he said, daughter, ain't got nothing with me. He said, it was your faith that made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. It was his power. But he said, but it was your faith that drew it out. And see, once again, that right there proves my point earlier about how I said when your heart opens, allowing you to get up. Because her heart opened at that moment. But it, when it happened, she couldn't even believe it happened. It happened because at that moment she was at faith, but after it happened, she got scared that it actually happened. Which means your, your heart can open for a moment and you can grab it right then. And that Jesus passed her by and she couldn't touch him, maybe she wouldn't have never got it the next day. Okay. This is some good stuff. Mark 9, 21, how long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What you mean if I can? That was an insult to Jesus. He said, my part is done. He said, the question is, anything is possible if you can believe. He said, anything is possible. But I've already done my part. You have to do yours. So that's faith of the individual. Now look at people. Let's look at people that Jesus healed. I'm sorry, that was the faith of the person. Now let's look at people that Jesus healed, and it was the faith of the minister. And when I say minister, I'm talking about the one administering the healing. Because I'm going to know we're all ministers. You know what's so crazy? It's amazing to see how men depower you. I know that may not be a word. And how God empowers you. Now he said, now, now that we have done what we have done, these are the signs of the ones that we have empowered as regular children. Um... They're born again. They'll get water baptized. They'll speak in this supernatural language. It says that they will kick Satan in the teeth and they will lay hands on people and they will watch them be healed. Now, he said, that is the sign of simply someone who has accepted me. We turn that into, okay, well, you have to go to Bible school. You have to have a title. You have to be ordained. And when we do that, you won't be able to do none of the stuff that Jesus empowered you to do. We ain't got so far off track, it's crazy. Mark 3, 1 through 6, Jesus went into the synagogue again and noticed a man with a deformed hand. Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. If he healed the man's hand, they planned to accuse him of working on the Sabbath. Remember I told you? Some people wait to see what happened to see if they can get you. Jesus said to the man with a deformed hand, come and stretch, come and stand in front of everyone. Then he turned to his critics and asked, does the law permit good deeds on Sabbath or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? But they couldn't answer him. He looked around at them angrily 
and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. He said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored at once. The Pharisees went away and met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. That was, he didn't say nothing about the man's faith. Okay, now guess what? Now the man did have to lift his hand. Okay, but you can do that whether you believe or not. You know what I'm saying? Somebody might walk up to you, put your shoe out. Boom. That don't mean you're in faith. It means you're just following what they're going to do. Okay. Mark 7, 32. A deaf man with a speech impediment was brought to Jesus, and the people begged Jesus to lay his hands on the man to heal him. Jesus led him away from the crowd so they could be alone. He put his fingers into the man's ears, then spitting on his own fingers, he touched the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephatha, which means be opened. Instantly, the man could hear perfectly, and his tongue was freed so he could speak plainly. It says nothing about the man's faith. Mark 8, 22, when they arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus, and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out the village. It seems that when Jesus used his faith, he was going to do something crazy. He might have been operating in gifts of healing, because you better be operating in gifts of healing, because then spitting on the man's eyes, he laid hands on him and said, can you see anything now? The man looked around and said, yes, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again, <laughs> and his eyes were open. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. That scripture still just blows my mind. Jesus does something, and it works halfway. And so because it worked halfway, he didn't get up or give up or get upset. I wonder why it's not working. He just simply did it again, and then it went all the way. That's the hint about what we're supposed to do. We give up too easy. They lay hands on me. Nothing happened. Didn't do it again. Jesus did it again. Said nothing about the man's faith, though. Said Jesus spit on the man. <laughs> spit on the man's eyes. You're going to lay hands on him. <laughs> Can you see anything? Because Jesus didn't even know. <laughs> Can you see anything? Uh, yeah, but everybody looks like trees. Okay, let me do it again. Boom. What you see now? He said, okay, I got it. He said, cool. Don't tell nobody I spit on you. Luke 4.38, after leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a hot fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And she got up at once and started cooking. Said nothing about her faith. Luke 7.12, a funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Now, when you see Jesus was moved with compassion, that means that the Holy Ghost was moving upon him to do something. <clears throat> he was overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Nothing about the mother's faith. Nothing about her making a request. Can you raise my son from the dead? Jesus happened to walk past a funeral. And when he found, he, he apparently asked a question. And he said, what's going on here? Who is this? And they said, well, it's a young boy that died. And um, it was that woman over there. It was her only son. And at that moment, Jesus was moved with compassion. Said he put his hand on the casket. He didn't even call the boy by name. He said, young boy, get up. So y'all got that. You see people getting healed. Now you see faith. One from the one administering it and one from the one receiving it. But it's got to be there. Then you have two types of faith. One is sense knowledge. Mark 5, 22. Then a leader of the local synagogue whose name was Jairus arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little daughter is dying. He said, please come and lay your hands on her. Heal her so she can live. Now, I'm going to say a statement before I read these. Sense knowledge faith is the one that God uses the most because it is the easiest. Sense knowledge faith is if you lay hands on me, I'll exercise faith in what the word says about laying on of hands. 
if you put oil on me, I can exercise faith in what the Bible says about oil. Because there's something about the touch of something that activates your faith. When hands are laid on, I, I believe it came in right then. When I put the oil, and y'all ever heard of Shambach? I'm surprised why I mean y'all said yes. Shambach was crazy, wasn't he? You know. You don't, what did he say? Yeah, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. So, and Shambach did a lot of his meetings in, out of, in a tent. And, uh, and so, so if you were going to that meeting to be healed, it was best that you wore something that you were going to throw away. Because he had the healing line, and there was a man next to him with a bucket full of oil. And he would stick both his hands in that bucket. And it was hilarious. And when you stood in front of him, he just smeared it all over. Because actually, that's the way they did it in the Old Testament. It wasn't a little thing. Everybody had a vial. You put a little thing. They actually, and when they would anoint somebody, you would actually get on your knees, and they would pour the oil all over your head. And it would just drip down. That's why the Bible says, it talks about that precious oil that's at the head, and it says it runs down the beard and then into your clothes because that's how they used to anoint people with oil. And the difference is you didn't wear, wear an outfit that you threw away. You wore the most expensive thing you had because this was glorious. Wouldn't that be crazy? We do an anointing oil service, and everybody got to wear a ground and a tuxedo. You got to buy it. You can't rent it. You're like, where did all this oil come from? So sense knowledge faith, oh, it's based on that. Uh, Mark 5, 27. She heard about Jesus, so she came up from behind him through the crowd. We already talked about this lady. Touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Sense knowledge faith. It's faith based on the senses. I got to see something. I got to feel something. I got to touch something. And if that happens, I can get healed. And she said, she didn't say I could touch him. She said, if I can touch his robe, it'll happen. Mark 6, 12. So the disciples went out telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God. And they cast out many demons and healed many sick people, anointing them with oil. Sends knowledge, faith. James 5, 14. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Sends knowledge, faith. Mark 16, 18, they will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, sense knowledge, faith, and they will be healed. Y'all got that. The other one is senseless. It does not require the senses. I heard it. I have accepted it. My heart is open, and it is now activated. So most people will get healed by the previous, but this is a way that you can do it on your own. And also, well, let me just read it. Luke 7, 2. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. Okay. And this is not slavery in the way that you think. These are more like indentured servants. People, you get, the, the scripture says that you can have someone, back then, it was uh, a lot of slavery was a volunteer. You know, the, the term, of course, based on what has happened with history and stuff like that, has been even greatly perverted now. But back then, you could be a slave voluntary. You would dedicate your life to a family to be a blessing to them. And you could only do it for seven years. Jesus, the, the scripture says in the Old Testament, after seven years, um, it says that uh, if that person wants to be free, you have to let them go and you have to bless them. But if they decide to stay with you for life, it says take a wooden awl and bore it in their ear, and that's a sign that that person is dedicated to your family for life. Y'all got that? <clears throat> Some of y'all are like, yeah, I ain't trying to do all that. I don't even like my job, so you can talk about that, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> so they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, for he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends. He didn't even come. He, this dude is on another level. He sent some friends to Jesus. Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home. I'm not worthy of such an honor. I'm not even worthy to come to you and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I don't even have to hear you say it if they just tell me that they heard you say it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I know this because I'm under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. And I only need to say, go, and they go. Come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. That's called senseless. I don't need to see nothing. This is what the word says. I accept that and I'm going to act like it's true and walk in it. And then the healing comes. John 20, 29. Jesus told them, you believe because you have seen me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing. <laughs> they didn't see, but they heard. And hearing produces seeing. So y'all got that. That particular method, though, because you are so wired in our doubt and unbelief, you have to spend time being in the word, reading it, meditating it, imagining it, speaking to your body. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. We're closing that scripture. And as you do that, your faith becomes more and more alive, and you get to the point where you have accepted and you have seen what you are reading. One of the best statements I heard about the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is, is that as you read it, the Holy Spirit's job is to turn scriptures into pictures because no man doubts what he sees. You're reading it, but you don't see it yet. You got to keep on reading it. You got to keep on looking at it. And then the Holy Spirit will open up your eyes. Because watch this, when you're talking to an individual, you're like, I'm not following you. Can you repeat that? And they say it again. What? And they keep on saying it. And then when you get it, what do you say? Oh, I see what you're saying. So you can see it, you can hear it, and you can read it, but you may not see it. And the Holy Spirit's job is as you're meditating it, he begins to turn scriptures into pictures so you can see what it's saying. And when you see what it's saying, no man doubts what he sees, and you see that you are healed, and then your faith activates, and then the power travels on that road. That's the formula behind it. All righty, we're almost done, but this is good. Because people, most people, uh, you ask somebody, uh, what is faith? Uh, belief. So that's what you've been told. These are just graphics. And I am uploading all of my notes because this is the stuff that the body of Christ will have to walk in. It is not unscriptural for you to be challenged. It is unscriptural to be defeated by the challenge. Quit getting upset because you got sick. That's just an opportunity to kick the devil in the teeth. Sure, when I meet Satan, he can be like, this the devil's always, this the dude would always talk about he was kicking me in the teeth. And he was kicking me in the teeth too. You know what the Bible says? That, that there's going to be a moment before you go into eternity that says that every eye will be allowed to see Satan. You know what the scripture says about what you're going to say when you see him? It says you're going to say, is this the guy that turned the world upside down? Is this the guy that wouldn't let his prisoners go free? See, it's always hints in the scripture. See, if you're going to say that in the future, is this the guy that wouldn't let his prisoners go free? This lets you know Satan ain't going to let you go easily. Just because you're done with him doesn't mean he's done with you. They're going to find a way to keep you in some type of prison. prison and you got to use the power of God and holiness and light and the word to break yourself out of this stuff. Next graphic. It doesn't take time to produce change. It takes truth why nothing is changing. People are not using the truth. They're using time. Next graphic. You can dance, praise, pray, and shout, but without faith, you are simply exercising. I got that one from our, I got that one, by personal, I got that one from our own spiritual father. He said, he said, you fast without pray. He said, that's just a supernatural diet. Next graphic. Everything must be rooted in faith or it is fake. If there is no faith, it will not produce and it will not deliver your desired result. So thank God that he is called doctors and nurses. I know some people don't like this and medication because those are things that God has allowed to come on the scene to be a Band-Aid because we are not up to par with this. You understand what I'm saying? And God will not be mad at you if you decide to go the medication route or the operation route or the chemo route. He will not be mad at you 
It's just that those things come with side effects. And some a lot of people go down that route because they didn't were in the part of a church that taught them how to get healed in the first place. Y'all got me? Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that casually seek him. Lazily seek him. Do it before they go to bed after they watch four hours of television. Read a proverb on the way out the door as they had a coffee and a bagel. Got a Bible in their back seat to show everybody that they go to church. But they ain't been since COVID came out. <laughs> said diligently. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I said this Wednesday night. Any area of your life where you begin to apply diligence to improve your lifestyle, whether it be something natural like eating right, drinking more water, exercise to lose fat, build muscle, whether it be you working your relationship with your spouse, trying to spend more time with your children, trying to save money, and then when we switch over to the separate, not supernatural, you're trying to spend time in the word to just soak in it, let this stuff get in you to produce any of those areas, natural or spiritual, the moment you try to apply diligence, you have invited the dark side to bring a visitation to your house, to back you off. Because it is their job to steal and to kill and to destroy. And here you come trying to improve your life. And that goes against the culture of darkness. Improve? I mean, you know, it don't take nothing to leave here and go find something to eat that ain't got nothing to do with health. It's cheap, it's greasy, you're gonna eat it really fast. Y'all know what I'm saying? But that other stuff, it take time. See, that's how they're using you. I, man, I ain't got time to sit up here and, and get a whole ball of lettuce and then strip it and then cut it and then I gotta get a whole carrot and, and I got dun, 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 and then I got a slice. You notice that when it comes to the stuff that helps you the most, it takes time, and it takes energy, and it takes discipline. But when it comes to the other stuff, man, skip all this. We're going through the drive through at McDonald's. Give me a Happy Meal for me and my husband. We're going to share it, try to cut calories. And, and give me a, my favorite, give me a, a double Whopper and some fries and, and put in a Diet Coke. A diet? How many of y'all see people like that? I don't know what it is about them diet cokes that make people think. That it's crazy. With me, if I go in, I'm just simply going in. Okay, so, and I don't normally go in like that, but when I go in, like we went to a place, and what is that place, Longhorn, and I said, give me a steak. I wouldn't think about no carbohydrates, and no, I want a steak, I want a baked potato. I said, I'm going I'm to do the right thing, put some asparagus on the side and, and a corn on the cob, and then I need a Coke, and then when I'm done, I'm going to have that big old lava thing with an extra thing, ice cream, and me and my wife are going in. See, I can do that every once in a while because I'm getting better, but you can't do that every day. I almost said something. I would have been totally out of order. Hmm. God is a rewarder of them that diligently. You got to set a schedule. You know, Pastor Dollar used to say, I'm working on something. I don't have time to hang out. I'm working on something. I don't have time to watch TV. I don't even have time to go to the gym right now. I am working on something. I got to work. My, this thing is in my body, and it's still there, in spite of the fact that Jesus said he already carried it. So there's a disconnect someplace. Apparently, I'm not seeing something. I'm hearing something. I'm going to church, and I'm doing the right thing. But, but, but Satan is really good at putting us in prisons. And so in order to break out of this, I'm going to have to be diligent. And if I fall asleep, I'm going to just have to wake up. If I, if I, if, never mind. Mm. So, almost done. If you cannot please God without faith, you need to know exactly what it is. These are all graphics. I promise you I will upload. Number one, faith is a mystery. It says, and in the same way, the deacons must be those who are pure and true to their word, not addicted to wine, or with greedy eyes on the contributions. 
Instead, <laughs> they must faithfully embrace the mysteries of faith while keeping a clean conscience. So there's a side of it. You can use it to get a desired result, but it's very mysterious what this force is because faith is not a philosophy. It's a force. Next graphic. Every person is given a measure of faith the same way that every single person in this room, when you were born, you had a measure of muscles. So your spirit man has a measure of faith. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man, every man, the measure of faith. So it is given to you as a measure. It is your responsibility to increase it. The same way that everyone has generally at birth has generally the same amount of muscle mass. It's your responsibility to build it. Some people don't build it at all. Some people build a little bit, lean muscle. And some people, they can't get in the front door because their arms sticking out here like that. You ever see a guy at the gym, he looked like Bolo, but he got bird legs because he worked on these muscles, but he didn't work on those, which proves that you can work on some muscles in your spiritual body and not work on others. You can be really good on healing, but terrible at money. See what I'm saying? You can be really, really good at money and terrible at healing because you got to work out each muscle part. You have your... <clears throat> this is just to give you understanding or how to develop what you have. You can pray for your faith not to fail. This is Jesus talking. Simon, Satan is asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. <laughs> it's crazy, the implications of that, but... Next graphic, the level of faith you have now can be increased. The apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. The Lord answered, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea. It would obey you. So when they said, teach us how to increase our faith, he instantly used the example of a seed that grows. And watch this, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes, or watch this, faith increases, or faith grows by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it's letting you know you have a measure of faith. You can pray for it not to fail. And it says you can increase it, and you increase it by spending time in the word. Number five, Greg's graphic. It's a creative force. This is very important. That's, let me tell you all something. I'll say this statement up front. Faith is a creative force. It is neither good nor bad. It is neither righteous nor nor evil. It is a spiritual, scientific, invisible force that has the ability to create anything if you create it. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. So I want you to think about something. The reason why you can't please God without faith is because you asking him to do something. Watch. If God used that force to create everything, then you got to use the same force. He used that. Here you come with something else called crime. I didn't create everything by crime. I created it by that force called faith. Oh, y'all ready for this one? Here you come praying. I didn't create everything by prayer. I created everything by faith. Here you come begging. I didn't create everything by begging. I created everything by faith. And since you are my child, you got to create using the same stuff that I use. Amen. Now faith brings us. Now faith brings our hopes into reality. I'm going to read this one slowly. Faith brings what you are expecting into reality and it becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for <laughs> it is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen so we get over into this more later but just letting you know this is not some philosophical you know uh you know religious statements 
you know, that we faith can't be conjured up. It can be created, but it can't be conjured up. You can have something called the spirit of faith. There's something else. But it's letting you know. See, this is very important because it's telling you that's the main ingredient. And if you can get the main ingredient on the scene, you can get anything on the scene. If you can get the main ingredient on the scene, we can walk on water. Faith is the most important force. It is the most potent force in the universe. The entire universe was created by faith, which is why natural law can be controlled by it. How many of you know, if I created the chair, then I can make adjustments to the chair. If I created the car, as an engineer, I know how to come in and rearrange the equipment in the car. Today, they got cars, you all, where all this electronics, they can be at a computer, like, like uh, for example, the Tesla. With Teslas, you have to have a download update, and it affects the performance of the car. You have to do a, a software download, I'm sorry. I don't know what I said. You have to do a software download, and it perfects the performance of the car. Well, how they, can they create a software download? Because they're the ones who created the car. So what God is telling you is that faith is what created everything. And if it can create it, it can also manipulate it and change it. Some of y'all are a little too religious to receive that. Science folk in here like, wait a minute now. Yeah, that's why Jesus spoke to the tree. And the disciples were amazed. He said, amazed? He said, you can speak to that mountain. Look at these. So, well, never mind. Faith, next graphic, is a force with unlimited capacity to suspend, cancel, change, and recreate the laws of nature temporarily and permanently. That's why Jesus turned water into wine. Because water doesn't ferment into wine. That's why he did the thing with the fish and the loaves. That's why the water became cement unto him. And that's why he could raise the dead. Even though the dead was four days. And had decomposed. But it was faith that was used to create that body in the first place. So if it was used to create it, surely it could cause the decomposition to go in the opposite direction. That ain't nothing. See, it, see, if you don't teach faith at this level, people will never even, they'll keep it low. I'm just trusting God. Mm -hmm, he's just trusting you. <laughs> this is why vision boards are very important. You need to put everything on a piece of paper that because it's something about writing it down. It becomes a legal document in the invisible realm. It's something about writing it down and then looking at it because it's something about looking at something. You remember what it said in the Bible? Because whatever you keep looking at, you become. Y'all remember about, uh, what was Abraham's uh, cousin? Lot. Because we're almost done. <laughs> okay, good. Almost there. This is very important. If you go back and read the story of Abraham and Lot, God told Abraham, don't take Lot with you. Don't take no families with you. And he took Lot. He felt sorry for Lot because Lot's dad had died. The Lord didn't tell you to leave everybody behind except for the ones that their family members had died. He said, leave everybody. But he took Lot with him. Well, both Abraham and Lot both start increasing so much, it says that the land was too much for them to hold all of their prosperity. It says all of their employees kept arguing with each other because it wasn't enough space, which lets you know also God will also prosper you in disobedience to a certain point, but that's a different teaching. You study the life of Abraham, see how much he disobeyed, and God kept on increasing, but then they got to a stop, okay? <clears throat> so Abraham went to Lot and said, hey, look, man, we're relatives. We should not be arguing. He said, tell you what, he said, you pick which way you're going to go, and I'm going to pick which way, and I'll just take the opposite. And so Lot did not prefer his brother above himself. And it says Lot chose the best land. It says he went over here. He said, but the problem is uh, the best land was close to that city where every man was homosexual. And it says the problem is, is that when you read it, it says Lot pitched his tent towards the city. Which means every morning he got up, the first thing, Jesus, every morning he got up, the first thing he looked at was that city. He went back to bed. Or the next day, every, next morning he got up, he looked at that city. And when you look at the next scripture, it says Lot was living in what he was looking at. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's the power of vision. You got to write it down. Take pictures. Take a picture of yourself in the younger years. It don't matter if you're 92. 
pictures. Write it down. This is what my life is by the end of this year. I am totally healed. I'm this, I'm that. And you got to look at that. And when you look at it with your physical eye, you ain't going to close your physical eye. Look at it with your spiritual eye. Your imagination. Your imagination is so powerful that the people who built the Tower of Babel, God said, we must go down there and confuse them. He said, because they have done this, nothing they imagine will be kept from them. Do you realize how crazy you are when God has to come stop you? Because your imagination, we, that's how powerful the, and so that's the reason why spirits keep you in this state of confusion. Thinking about this dumb thing and thinking about this dumb thing and starting this idea and you can never get on point and stick with something. Because they know if you stick with something, even if it's evil, even if it doesn't exist, if you keep, that's how all uh, technology comes about. That's how the power of the imagination. When God says we got to confuse them. They said, because no, they said, if they imagine it and stick to it and keep looking at it and keep focusing on it, they'll become it. You just got to read the Bible correctly. That's crazy. The man got up every day, looked at the city. And it didn't matter that the city was evil. He still moved there because he was looking at it. That's why men and unfortunately now ladies, you can't keep looking at porno. You want to eventually become what you're looking at. Wow. Or what you're looking at to get in you. Yeah. Oh, Father, we going higher. <laughs> but it's not without a few band-aids on our toes and our backside and our eyelids. Next graphic. Faith is unwavering confidence in God until the desire is granted. Don't let go. Matthew 15, 22, a Gentile woman who lived there came to Jesus pleading, have mercy on me. My daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her. Jesus didn't even answer the girl. That's rude. Shows you how serious he was. It's another revelation. I meant to end 15 minutes ago, but this is good. Be about your business. Quit letting people distract you because they got a nice idea. He was called to the Jews first. So when a Gentile walked up, it didn't matter how gross her situation was. Ain't got time for that. We call that root. Jesus calls that purpose. That's crazy. He didn't even reply. Then as she, apparently she went to the disciples. They urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away. She's bothering us with all her begging now. Because you won't say nothing to her. <laughs> Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep. The people of Israel. But she came and worshiped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. I don't know. When you need something, you ain't thinking about protocols. I understand, Jesus. All that deepness about you sent to the Jews and, and all of this numbering system that y'all came up with in heaven and all these timelines and, 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 and prophetic insight and symbolism, uh, all that's trash to me. All I know is I got a girl that I gave birth to that has been taken prisoner by your enemy. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus responded in verse 26, it's not right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that's true. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Listen to Jesus, dear woman. He said, your faith is great. Your request is granted ahead of time. Her daughter was instantly healed. Yeah. I've always had a problem with that scripture in a good way because we love to sing that long song. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. We love that song. But most of us religiously would say, when Jesus says no, nobody can say yes. Not according to this woman. No. No, not no. Jesus, I need you to heal my daughter. <laughs> See, this is a mama. Uh, uh, a man couldn't have done this. Because woman act a fool over the kids. 
the, the, the brother would have been like, just let it go, just let it go. No, I ain't letting this go. And uh, she came up again. She got getting on the disciples' nerves, and they went to Jesus. Can you, can you do something? You know you can do it. We're not going to do it. It's crazy. That's another thing. They had the power to do it. They didn't do it. I don't know what was going on with that situation. I said, no, I'm not sent to her. I'm sent to Jewish people. She came back again. See, most of us, if we are honest, if Jesus told you no the first time, that's the will of God. Look, do you realize what type of intestinal fortitude you have to have? Do you realize how much you have to have no respect for Jesus' protocol to tell him, I'm going to lean on you until you say yes? And when Jesus, you remember what Jesus said? He said, anything that comes out of my mouth came from the throne. Do you realize how crazy you are when you make the one who sits on the throne change his mind? After he told you no? Yeah. That's, how strong, that's how strong faith is. Wow. It'll give you what you want, even if you're not supposed to get it. Yeah. Now, why, if that's wrong, would God have this woman in the scripture as your example? Wow. To show you how low we live in. Somebody's stopping by Target after we get out of this church service today. Get to where y'all vision boards at. I need them big things that they do in kindergarten, the big white ones, yeah. What all? She said the prefos. She got it in mind. I, I mean, I want you to think about how non-religious this is. This is. These are the type of people that they wanted you to know about. They didn't want you to know about the ones that's, that were religious. They didn't want you to know about the ones that touched Jesus and didn't get an answer. They wanted you to know about the one that pressed through the crowd. They wanted you to know about the one that Jesus told no three times and forced the Son of God to say yes. He only said yes for one reason. He didn't say it's because I felt sorry for you. It's not even because you begged. He said, but it's obvious that you have an unbreakable faith. That's going to demand that God changes his mind. Man, I've been living too long. You're going to tell God to take his answer back? No. 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 You're going to do it. You said no, I say no. You said no, I said no. You said no again, I said no. You're going to give me a wonderful poem about not casting stuff to the dogs? Let me switch the poem around on you then. Y'all realize how crazy that is. And this is the purpose that God wanted you to see. He wanted you to read that. Why are you thinking you can't ask God for something? Because a preacher told you no. And you must be crazy. <laughs> Terry said you must be. Let's go ahead and shut this down. That point alone got me. You'd be surprised. The prison that's on your mind that makes you be a nice little docile Christian that keeps your grass cut in the neighborhood and waves at the people where you got a sign that the blood of Jesus protects this home. I ain't tell you should build your sign up. All I'm telling you is they need to know that the blood of Jesus protects your home without a sign. They supposed to drive by. I don't know what it is about that house. That's how my house is. I know my house is like that. The neighbors drive through every time. Mm -hmm, I don't even know. I haven't even met him yet, but I know he's crazy. It's something on that house. Same way that you can see darkness is the same way that darkness can see you. Seven times greater. They supposed to know you live in that apartment. I don't know what's coming through them doors. But I don't know. Just something about him. We should live in the apartment we lived in. And we thought the neighbors was racist or something. Till we moved out because they never spoke they never spoke they always look crazy you know they, they did a lot of smoking so it, it dries up your skin they were just looking crazy all the time they just look mean and they and, and we were moving out they leaned on bargaining y'all moving out this first time they spoke to us <laughs> in two years y'all moving out and you should have seen the look on their face it was like their protection was leaving there are some people that want to stay next to you because they know if you next, they know when Darth Vader comes in the room, you're the last one that's gonna get your blood sucked. You know what I'm saying? That was a stupid example, y'all know exactly. Yeah. Let me go ahead and finish this. Yeah. 
I don't even know where I am. Let me go ahead and finish this. Jesus, I can't do nothing right. Where am I at? Just put up the next screen. Faith is sharing responsibility with God for the manifestation of what is desired. That's why Jesus said, what do, you, what do you mean if I can? It's on you. Anything is possible if a person believes. I already got my part tight. You don't have yours tight. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them. Watch, look, look at that. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become. You receive the word, power is released for you to become what you're looking at. Next graphic. Up. Oh, any faith that holds God 100% responsible for its results is an irresponsible faith. I'm just waiting on God. Mm -hmm. And he's just waiting on you. This waiting game is about to go straight into eternity. Any faith that holds God 100% responsible for its results is an irresponsible faith. Jesus didn't walk up to anybody and say, I know you've been waiting a long time. He didn't say that. He said, you got faith? Mm-hmm. You receive it. What about the other people? They don't have it yet, so they got to wait. Because we told you, you can't please us without it. And if you can't please God without faith, then your number one Bible study should be on that subject. When you leave here today, you shouldn't go and say, that was a wonderful sermon. You need to make a plan this week to look up and Google. Google is your friend right now in some aspects. Google. All the scriptures in the Bible on faith. Write them down. Then study them and begin to meditate them. You'll find yourself like I was standing in front of a tree wondering if you should do it. And if you do, you're going to get in trouble with the pastor. That was a real incident, by the way. Faith will make you crazy. It'll make you see this entire planet the size of a marble. You can't keep meditating the same thing just boom, over and over. And this thing is changing you into what it says. And Satan knows that. That's why he's going to keep you out of it. And you'll do really good for about three or four days. And then mysteriously, you just kind of back off and don't even know why. It's called the invisible prison. Next graphic. Faith is an invisible shield that destroys all weapons and attacks from the dark side. In addition to all this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. People talk a good game, but do you really have that shield? It's a faith. See, what, what, this is what we say. I'm putting on my armor today. I got my shield of faith. No, you don't. You just said something out your mouth. Shield of faith. Is an in, it's an invincible mindset that when I walk in this building, it does not matter that everyone is sick. That does not apply to me. That's the attitude of faith. It's a shield. It is lit. When you're in it, it's a force field that for, prevents you from being a uh, statistic. You know, 20 more people died of monkeypox. This is all you got to say when you see that. Yep, my name will never be on that list. That's faith right there. Not, I'm going to find scriptures. You know the most son that you point at the television? No, 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 no. It's not Jesus didn't do all that. Matter of fact, Jesus didn't do most of what we do. I'm almost done. I didn't mean to keep y'all, but the Holy Ghost did mean to keep y'all. All of your battles are defined as fights of faith. And then he says this, fight the good fight. Why is it good? Because faith is not to make you win every time and never lose. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Okay? Next graphic. If the Bible says all things are possible to them that believe, your investment in building your faith should be priceless. It should be tireless and diligent, systematic and relentless. You know what's funny about the Matrix? You ever notice that the whole movie with the Matrix. Most of y'all saw the Matrix, right? It's interesting, the whole movie, the whole movie is about Neo believing what other folk knew. He didn't believe he could do what Morpheus knew he could do. And the whole movie is about 
Neo's mind getting more and more renewed, more and more renewed to the point where he gets to the end, he realizes he is the one. And when they shot those bullets, he didn't duck. He just said, no. That was a showcase of your life. Your whole life is finding out. You know what? Your whole life is really not learning as much as it is, is unlearning. These are the four degrees, four graphics, five actually. First degree of faith is none. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except place their hands on a few sick folk and heal them. You have no faith. Next one is weak faith. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body dead when he was about 100 years old, now that the deadness of Sarah's womb. Then you can have little faith. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Little faith is you worrying about how you're going to get your bills paid. It's little faith. Now, don't put, now guess what, though? You've got to stop putting yourself in a position of little faith. I ain't talking about assignments. Sometimes God here on the assignment, you know what's going on. We're talking about it's been 10 years, and you can't keep going around the circle over and over and over again. Nope, 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 nope. It's funny, y'all looking at me trying not to. So I'm going to just say this. Technically, there's no one Technically, everyone in this room could make money show up without a job. It just requires such a high level to mentality to do it. God tells you to get a job. Because he wants you to get out there like Peter on the water. But technically, you can make anything show up. Because faith is not bound by anything that we do. Faith is not bound by a nine to five. It's not bound by any laws that men created. It's only bound by what God created. And God is the one who said all things are possible. So technically every person could walk in that. Jesus did. He just made stuff show up. He said he had a large number of people that just constantly gave him gold, silver, money. And he said a lot of them were very, very rich. Technically. But the discipline and the time that it takes to keep your mind on that frequency, most people can't do that. Most people can't deal with the dark side that's going to come against you and say, no, 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 we're not going to just let you manifest stuff out of thin air like Jesus. So Jesus is like, it's better for you to kind of move over here because you can't handle that. Because there are degrees of faith. I practiced that one time. One time. And I won't even tell you how much money showed up while I was working nine. I might share that next week. We're not talking about money. What happened to me in a few short months, making $9 an hour part-time. It got so bad that my wife and I were starting to question how we're going to explain this to the government. And I stopped. Haven't picked it up yet. I'm, I'm sure I, I think it's time for me to pick it back up again, but it's, you'd be surprised if, if the Bible says all things are possible. Then all things are possible. You understand what I'm saying? So, so Jesus was on that level where he, you know, Jesus had the top business of the day, by the way. He, he was a maker of, when it says he was a carpenter, I mean, he was laying carpet. They didn't have it like that. You know, I mean, he was a builder of homes and boats. Jesus was a real estate professional. He was a builder, a construction worker. He made homes and he made boats. So he started out with 500, never mind. So, and then he told the disciples, walk away from you. Because I'm on such a level, I can take care of me and you. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be on a particular, you got you to be sold out. Most people are not sold out like that. And if you become sold out like that, then you might back off. Because when you get sold out like that, you invite hell to your household. We're going to find a way to back you off, son. See, it's one thing to fight one devil. It's another thing to fight our army. It's another thing to fight a bunch of them. When you're fighting a bunch of them because of your weight, you got to deal with a certain level of psychological warfare that most people are not mentally prepared to handle. And I'm not saying I am. The Lord just takes me as far as what he knows I can handle. And what I've had to handle so far, I know would kill most people because it almost killed me because I wouldn't. I was just, you know, it's a different thing of, never mind, I ain't got to explain this. All stuff y'all already know. What do we have? Little faith? Then you have strong faith. He started not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 
We know you're not strong in faith when you keep your head down all the time like this. You're just kind of silent, just kind of walking around, just kind of moping. That means that you are not strong in faith. When you're really strong in faith, you're giving God thanks because you're expecting something to show up at any moment. Matter of fact, you ain't expecting nothing. You already know it's on the way. <laughs> then you have great faith. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Even though I was looking for it, I ain't found it. Everyone say, last scripture for the day. Woo! Y'all got that. So this, I, I had to do this in such a way where people could listen to this over and over about faith to get them out of this philosophical religious mindset of, you know, uh, some guy holding on to the mic telling you, hold on uh, to your faith. Uh, and, uh, and you were you were shouting, you said amen, and you walked right out the door, had no idea to accomplish what he preached. I can be so out of order. Think about my past stuff that I used to do when people were shouting. I was, I was just like, there she go. Sister Betty about to run across the church right now, watch. Romans 4, 16. Y'all remember when Abraham, God told Abraham and his wife that they were going to have a baby? Sarah laughed. <laughs> God must be crazy. I don't have a baby at the age. Of. Remember what she said? And, and she said, she said, I'm not getting ready to have pleasure again at this old age. She wasn't even thinking about having a baby. She was thinking about pleasure. She was, <laughs> she was thinking about getting it in again. Yes. Hey, the Bible said that. I ain't make that up. <laughs> and I mean, I remember the story. The angel did not appreciate her laughing. He said, why are you over there laughing? She said, I didn't laugh. He said, yes, you did. <laughs> I just, why is this even in here, Lord? What does it got to do with us? <laughs> the Bible is hilarious when you read it the right way. So, and you know that because Sarah still didn't believe, she gave Abraham a better idea. I know the Lord said this. But let's do something lower level because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Nobody can have a baby at the age of 100. So what God means is for you to take this young tenderoni over here that's working in our house and you go have a baby by her and then I will claim her as my own. And Abraham did not say, woman, you are a foolish individual. Do not you know that the word of God is true and it stands forever. I'm a man of integrity and character and holiness. I shall not do a thing. The Bible didn't say Abraham put an argument. It said he, it said he just listened. Okay. <laughs> Since you say it was the Lord. This stuff is in there because we do this junk all day long. So this right here is the formula that Abraham tapped into to get out of that stupid way of thinking, out of his mistake. This is what he did to get, because remember, God told him, but it wasn't going to happen until Abraham did his part. Y'all remember Zechariah? It's the last. Remember what the angel told him? He said, you're getting ready to have a child in your old age. And Zechariah was like, you know, what the statement that Zechariah made was a statement of unbelief. And the angel got mad. He said, now, because of how important this is, we can't let your doubt mess this up. So he said, you will be dumb until the child is born. Because we're going to make sure you don't say nothing stupid. There are some things you all that are so important, you can't get out of it. God will put you in a position where you are forced to believe because what you are called to do is so important in the eternal scope yeah. of forever. Yeah. yeah, we can let this person slide, but you, you ain't going to slide forever. You're going to do this. Yeah. So this is what Abraham did. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses if we have faith like Abraham's. But Abraham is the father of all who believe. This is God telling you, do it like your daddy did. This is what the scripture means when it God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God 
who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Now that's important. It didn't say Abraham believed God, period. It says when he believed God, he believed him with a certain mentality. It wasn't a won't he do it type of thing. It was, yeah, I believe God, but, but I believe God can do this. I don't believe he's just God and he created a planet. I believe he can do anything, including raise somebody from the dead. So he was believing God at a particular frequency. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And even when there was no reason to hope, which is expectation, Abraham kept on hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you have. And it, see, this is a formula here. And Abraham's faith did not weaken. Even though at 100 years of age, he figured his body was good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew. It grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. So when your faith is growing, you're bringing glory to God. And then verse 21 is the key. He wasn't convinced. He was fully convinced. Which means now he's at the point where there's no person in the planet that can talk him out of what he sees in his mind. It's not going to happen. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too. Assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. You notice that when God talks faith, he keeps you in the realm of stuff that you say is impossible. When we talk faith, we just talk about stuff like, yeah, God can do it. All things are possible with God. That's so doubt and unbelieving. You know, know, somebody tell you something, yeah, all things are possible with God. And people say that because they don't believe it. But well, we're we going to at least give God glory because we know he could do something like that after all. Because he is God. But he ain't going to do it for you. He ain't going to do it for you. That's why people who believe like that, you know, you notice it was never a crowd around. You by yourself or this. You got to ask yourself, this Bible is either true or it's fake. And I would behoove all of you, my wife and I start doing it. I would move all of you this week. You need to take this seriously. You would be surprised. You know why? You know, for this church, we had a wonderful year during COVID, two years. You know, we had gotten a little out of order because we were, like, celebrating COVID. When it was, like, people dying, we can't be celebrating stuff that's killing people. But it was so good to us, we were rejoicing. But it was like that in our personal life, too, for my wife and I, even though we didn't have that money like that. Okay? It was, we realized it was because of one thing. Why, the reason why my wife and I and our personal life prospered during COVID, m- what we accomplished in one year was insane to us financially. And it wasn't because we were pastors, because most pastors are broke. It wasn't because I'm the leader. It wasn't because I was anointed and appointed. It was for one reason, you all. We wrote it down. I said, this is what we expect to happen this year. We wrote it down. And we kept speaking over it, praying over it, thank God over it, looking over it. And, and, and let me tell you something, you all. See, Joy, stand up right here for a second. Right where that pole is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stand right there. Joey represents your manifestation. Joey represents what you got down on paper. Okay? If you don't write it down, you don't have nothing to look at. If you're not speaking to it, if you're not thinking, if you're not riding in the car using your imagination to see yourself walking in it, then everything lies dormant. But if you do the opposite, okay, the invisible realm, okay, see, this is right. <sighs> this is the reason why the world keeps giving glory to the universe. 
because they have tapped into the law of faith that's not good or bad righteous or evil it's a law it is a creative force that will create what you believe in what you wrote down and because it's not reserved for the sons of God and it's reserved for everybody the world is tapping into it and they know that they don't follow Jesus so they give glory to the spaceships and the universes and the aliens and everything out there the universe is on it today but they actually tapped into what God created. It's a force that is intelligent enough mm, to recreate your life, even though God is out the equation. <laughs> Think about that. It's, cr it's a creative force, and it only responds to belief. <sighs> it doesn't respond to righteousness. And it doesn't respond to sin. It only responds to belief. And it only responds to what you believe. So if you believe you can only go this far, then I'll take you this far and then I'll stop and wait to see if you believe you can go further. So you're way over here. What's on your board is way over there. And the moment you start looking at that now and giving God thanks for that now and using your imagination now and getting scriptures to look at it now mysteriously. That's why the Bible calls faith a mystery. Mysteriously. Things go into motion to put you in a position to get there. Some folk got jobs only to get you to your vision. Some folk had an increase in business just to get you to what you wrote down. That's how it happens. So I know that part of my wife's real estate deals was because of what we wrote down. Just mysteriously things begin to happen and this opens up and, and that been opens up and, and you wrote it down. You haven't worked. You know, I know a girl, this girl, she, she wrote it down and she had been believing, but she finally wrote it down. She gave me the testimony. She said, I finally got the car. And then she got the car in the eighth month on the third day after three years of waiting for the car. They'll use eight because it's the number for new beginnings. And three is a number of completion. And it's just crazy. See, so, so you got to remember something. If you don't write it down, if you don't begin to focus on that, now it will stay in your future. But if you start looking at that now, that's a divine law that says, okay, they're looking at it in their mind now, which means by law we must make them look at it in the physical now. So forces just supernaturally, it don't matter if you don't know how to get out of debt. Y'all look at student loans too much like King Kong and Godzilla. It doesn't matter how big it is, folk. I'm just letting you know. And because of how big it is, you have determined with your belief, your words, and your actions that this monster is too big for you to handle with the sword of the spirit. I'm going to just stick my hand in the sand. And then some people, what they do is they go to school, get student loans, and then they go back to school just to get money to pay off the other student loans. That's a that's a, vicious, see, that's a vicious cycle. You're just going into debt to pay off the debt. You, do, you know, because you get money left over and stuff when you go to school. Okay? So, thank you. So, where's my iPad? Put up these two scriptures. This is what you get to do. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing the word and hearing by the word of God. There are tons of scriptures for anything that you want. John 8, 31, since we're talking about healing. Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my, um, are my disciples indeed. You'll come to the place where you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you continue. Again, the real war is going to be continuing, not starting. Everybody starts. Everybody starts but very few continue. And you gotta go into it knowing, you almost need to have an accountability partner or something. You, you, you gotta go into it knowing, okay, now when I start this, cause it doesn't, remember what God said? He said, it doesn't take long. He said, when you call out, I'll do it speedily. <laughs> and because Satan knows that God moves with speed, he knows he has to speedily get you off track. That's why if you really think about it, y'all, most of y'all did the right thing when it comes along these lines for a week. If that. And then about the time the second we got there, you were off. You know, when it comes to working out, 
You know, you did it for about two or three weeks. You know, the worst time to go to the gym is on January the 1st. Come back February the 1st. Those people have gotten off track already. There is something about progress that draws out darkness to stop you in your tracks. And it is only those that can act a complete fool and do radical, insane stuff. Be up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Stay on your job. Be in the parking lot on that. Girl, why are you always just sitting in the car two hours after we get off work? Because I'm working on something. If I go home, I fall asleep. But if I sit in this hot car and just sweat while I'm reading and going over this, I can get some stuff done. I can get another perm. I can get another weave. I can get another hairstyle and I can get some clothes. That's called a washing machine. But I can't get another life. So if I got to sweat and I got to stink and I got to stay after, if I got to sneak, I used to sneak into a church just to pray. It's not an exaggeration. I shouldn't say that while I was still sneaking. I would go there when they opened it, but then when they closed down early morning prayer, I'd go up in the balcony and lay down on the bench until they turn the lights off, stay up there and pray. You better do what you got to do, you all. Set a timer, set an alarm. You come to church, you got your ringer on. You at home, it's on vibrate. <laughs> so, you can manifest anything. Let's stand. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says? Believers were hands on the sick. And the Bible says the two of you shall agree in regards to anything you ask it to be done. And it doesn't take a long time. So we're going to do this as a group now. If you're here, you're in the audience, and you want those around you to lay hands on you, just simply shoot your hand up. And we're going to just pray in a moment. Okay. Look around. Lift your hand high so they can see. Look to see if there's someone around you with your hand left up. And then you go ahead and put, um, put your hand on their shoulders or their arms. We've had people in the audience that we were praying in tongues and that power surge hit and, and sickness just left their body from that. It's amazing. So go find somebody. If they have their hands laid up, we're going to pray together in a second. Thank you, O oh Lord God. Put your hands on them. I'm going to wait until everybody gets surrounded. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you don't have to have faith in their hands. You have to have faith in what the word said would happen if believers were the hands on the sick. I'm going to pray in a moment, just a general prayer. Okay? I think everybody has somebody. Cool. Oh, well, make, oh, yeah, good, good. Okay. All right. Now, as I pray, we're going to pray and just speak the word. You don't even have to know what it is. Jesus didn't know what it was when people were sick. He said, your faith made you. Oh, I don't even know what your sickness is. Just speak to it. Say, in the name of Jesus. Use your imagination to look on the inside of their body. See your eyes going throughout their body, telling everything that's not supposed to be there to get out. Everything that's misaligned is straighten up. In the name of Jesus. Father, in obedience to your word, as hands are laid upon this body, you said that if two of us would agree in regards to anything, it would be done. So we declare that as hands are laid on these bodies, sickness and disease melts off now. No sickness and no disease will be allowed to go past the walls of this building and it will not be allowed to go into the walls of every household represented here. You gave us authority over sickness and disease. You gave us authority over demonic creatures. So we rebuke every spirit of infirmity. We curse every root and every inroad that is trying to enforce sickness and disease. In Jesus' mighty name, sickness and disease be gone. Leave these bodies right now in the name of Jesus. Melt off to never return. As hands are laid upon them, Holy Spirit, flow your power through the spirits of the individuals that have their hands on them. Jesus, put your hands on their hands and allow your power to flow on the inside of those bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord God. Your word is written, O oh Lord God, and therefore we have activated and we have acted on it. Therefore, this is done. Thank you, O oh Lord God. This will be a place where sickness and disease is no longer allowed, tolerated, or allowed to exist. There'll be a question, O oh Lord God, in the world. 
is there any sick amongst them because it's very rare let's all lift our hands and give God thanks thank you Father God for your unlimited power and your grace thank you Lord God for the force field of faith that keeps us from all viruses that are coming up on the planet thank you Lord God that not only we will be kept from sickness and disease but we thank you Lord God that it is leaving our bodies thank you Father we bless and honor you and thank you for it in Jesus name amen, amen. hallelujah <laughs> send in your testimonies because we're going to start reading them I know Tisha she sent me one yesterday and I just I didn't get to it so maybe it's reserved for next week but I'm going to definitely read it because, because there's something called the spirit of faith is that when people start giving their testimonies about getting healed your faith start kicking in oh 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 you know and so we're gonna keep on doing this i don't care nothing about oh nothing happened then guess what you need to be you need to be in the word on healing this week and come right back next week and do this all you understand what i'm saying you it's it's a process it's a scientific process you build your faith boom okay what if it needs to be here you got it here this week nothing happened you got it here this week nothing happened you got it here this week you're talking right you're feeling right hands laying on right you got to keep on going, and you come in here, bam. Right. It's a process. That's why he said faith can be little, it can be small, non existence, but it'll grow. And when it gets over into that strong and great, you can manifest anything. Anything. And when I say anything, anything. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to uh, our future before I let you go. I really do seem to have this thing where I'm stuck in two worlds all the time. So no, I'm not about to be like Enoch. You know, even though I was listening to a pastor, he said the body of Christ has to be prepared for this. He said there's a difference between someone dying versus the Lord taking them. He says some people are just simply being taken. It's something that I'm learning about more and more is these formulas, how times and dates line up for certain things. You know, but I want to encourage you to be eternally minded. I don't know how to explain this. I don't know if it's something the Lord, the Holy Spirit is doing to me. I have the ability to look at certain movies now and see what heaven is like. You know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You, I can't explain it. It's like um, most of you have seen the movie Thor, the first one, how glorious the kingdom looks and how the halls look. And you see that and you, your spirit switches. Um, and so I'm just encouraging you all, live for Christ every day. Try to be the best person you can be. Treat your spouses right, your children right, your parents right. Be the best. Pray, read, study, fight, fight, fight. That's one of the things that I love about Lord of the Rings. There are wars. They were always overwhelmed. And you would always hear the king in the midst of everybody. Fight, fight. People are dying. Fight, fight, fight. It looks overwhelming. Another army showed up. Fight. He would always say, fear no darkness. Fight, fear no darkness. Fight. That's what we gotta do. Quit being don't be afraid of anything. Take the attitude, the worst thing that could ever happen is that I die and go to a place that I would never want to come back from. That's the worst thing that can ever happen. So since that's the worst thing that could ever happen, I'm going to choose for that not to happen and kick the devil in the teeth. Let me use this as an experiment. Hmm. I still feel pain there, but that means nothing. You're going to go. You got to talk to sickness and disease. You got to work this every day. You got to be. You understand what I'm saying? This is a war. Yes. Yes. And those examples in the scripture are not there for your pleasurable reading. They're there to show you if the men who have less did this, who are you that have more? Those scriptures are in there for a reason. A man speaks to the sun and God makes the planet stop turning so he can finish killing people. That's crazy. So I'm excited, but I'm just, in this last moment, you know, I'm just encouraging you. There's, there's a dangerous thing when that veil between heaven and earth begins to thin out. And the more it thins out, the more you feel sorry for your own folk, let alone folk in the world. Because you know most people are not ready. You're not ready for just the beauty. 
you think about God and being judge, you're not ready for the creativity and the beauty. You're not ready to see an angel with purple hair that's made out of diamonds. They got orange eyes and his eyes is the universe. You're not ready to see machines that you don't know if it's human machine. What is this thing? You're not ready to see beings that the only reason you don't die is because you're up there. But if you saw that thing on planet Earth, you go to a coma and die immediately. You're not ready for it. You're not ready to listen to a hundred songs at the same time that mesh perfectly. You're not ready to hear one song that is so beautiful. You can listen to that thing for a million years. But it's like another trillion pieces of music. And all of them are more beautiful than the next. You're not used to a mansion that'll change on you every moment. And when it changes, it's more beautiful than it was before. And it does that forever. You're not used to walking into mansions and flowers seen. And flowers you've never seen before. You're not used to that. And you're not ready for it. And yet the Bible says, it's never entered into your mind. Nor your imagination. Things that we have for those that love us. And we love them. You know what the Bible says about heaven? And I'm going to let you go. It says, It is a place of fullness of joy. And then that's good enough. It says it's a place of fullness of joy. And then it says this. Where at God's right hand, there are pleasures forever. Y'all, when God says pleasure, it ain't nothing on planet Earth that compare to that. This little, I don't know what this is down here. It's, it's a barrier of darkness has watered down everything. You know? But just, I mean, you're not ready to go live in a place <clears throat> that the Bible says the light is seven times brighter than the sun. I mean, look at those bulbs. Imagine living in light that's about six times brighter than that. That's the atmosphere. And the Bible says there's no sun. It says Jesus is the light. What type of place is that where one man lights up the place and is seven times brighter than down here? You're not ready for a place like that. And just as bright as that is up there. That's how dark it is downstairs. And that darkness is doing everything it can to darken your eternity. God wants them to be on the top level, but they, we can't get them to go to hell. At least, can we get them down? Satan wants you to remember you forever. I'm the one, okay? You made it there, but I got in a good lick. And I can't do nothing to God, but when I do it to you, I'm doing it to him because you all are one. And if I can slap you, I slap God. If I can stab you, I stab God. If I kill you, it's a measure of him that dies because he said it was my will for all. So the only way I can make God sad is to destroy you. And to see the whole planet Thank you, Jesus. To see the whole planet going down, that's a difficult thing to watch. It's difficult when you begin to see the other side. And I've never really seen it, and here I can see it. Not with the physical, but with the spiritual. But the spiritual is overwhelming enough. You know, I think about the music that our kids listen to. And rock and roll and whatever, R&B and the rap and... And these guys are acting like monsters. Don't realize they were called to be kings. There's going to be nothing worse in the world than the Lord show you were a king. But you became a monster. So now you got to hang out with monsters forever. And the church doesn't have this realization. So she's willing to play the game of pretend. Prayer is not that deep. I don't have to be in the word. I don't have to witness. Just come to church every once in a while. I don't need to give up nothing. You have no idea what it means when the God of the universe says the Holy Ghost is the down payment. We can't even understand these things. You can't even understand them. What do you mean the Holy Ghost is the down payment? You haven't even seen him. He's the one that killed you and reconstructed you. Gave you a language that you don't even know how to understand. Okay, so, I don't know. That's my life. It's very frustrating because you live in two worlds at the same time. You walk in Walmart. When I walk in Walmart, I walk in another dimension. 
You see certain things. You see darkness on individual, but you see what they were called to be if there was light. You see the witch. You see the witch, I see the prophet. You see the pimp, I see the pastor. And it's hard because the Holy Spirit will kind of, this is going to sound strange, he'll begin to make you sick. You have to be ready for feeling like you're sick when you pray. You know, because it's the Lord placing you in toxic environments to try to bring, to try to bring light. You know, you see the prostitute walking down the street by herself. That prostitute used to be a child that had hope and now walking the street like a slave. And so, and yet the people dance away and they drug away and they smoke away and they cuss away and they sin away. Flying at 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction. And the planets are turning. And the clock is just winding down. Planet Earth going around. They call it revolving. God calls it a countdown. The Bible says that when Jesus does step through, it says at that moment, it says the entire planet will fall to their knees and wail. Because before he even says anything, they will know that they messed up. So, I don't know where that came from, because we're talking about faith for healing, but these are moments when the Holy Spirit will share. Y'all, let me tell you something, for most of you, if not all of you in this room, you represent a prophecy in the scripture in Amos. It says it'll come to pass in the last days, there'll be a famine for the gospel. It says not a shortage of food, it says a shortage of hearing the truth, and then it says something, it says even the young men and women will go back and forth looking for the truth, and won't be able to find it. Jesus said in the last days it'll be few you represent the few so the Bible says to whom much is given much is required so it's very easy to take advantage of something that is given to you freely like this when most people don't have it it's funny the people who live out of town they wish they could be here some of those that will be here they don't come here it's just weird you can't figure it out it's like when you have it you take advantage of it when you don't have it you wish you had it and the Lord is just moving us slowly, slowly. So I, I didn't mean to keep you. But it's a lot I don't understand. As we move forward, it's a lot we don't understand. And it's a little alarming, you know. Why? Why did the Lord pick this ministry to be ingrained into that ministry overseas? The biggest thing in the planet. That's our future. And if it is, it's scary. It's straight scary. Randall will tell you and over there with me and Marlon. It's, it's just it's straight scary to see a church that make the book of Acts look like Sunday school. To see a church that's walking in what we're moving into. To see women that are 70 and 80 stand up on a pulpit. I just gave birth to triplets. It does not matter the age. Sarah is my grandmama. If she had it, how come I can't? I'm not talking about every once in a while. How does a 70-year-old woman have triplets without a womb? How does the congregation begin to raise? They got te y'all got a testimony every week of somebody raising somebody from the dead. Not the preachers, the people. Women go to the hospital. They just can't get the baby to come out. Call her husband, take me to the church. Go to the church, minister, just speak a word, and the baby comes out. He's a little boy. His mama, I mean his wife. Sir, you're getting ready to lose this child because the baby won't turn. Unipo comes into the hospital, doesn't even say hi to his wife. Walks in, baby, turn. Walks back out, doesn't even check to see if the baby turned. Just walked back out, went back to work. See, when the Bible says all things are possible, but we live in this culture in the United States where the church has taken on the culture of doubt and unbelief. Let's just go to church and have a pep rally. Let's pretend that we walk in victory. We don't want to talk about the elephant in the room or the dinosaurs. Or all of the other animals is in the room because then it would make us look bad because we did this for 30 years and now we got to correct it so let's stay in pride and just keep pretending and do crap shoots and hopefully god will show up and and we got to get the people to keep coming so we can so i can live my life of status because i didn't get nothing when i was growing up so i got to make sure the people come so i can get money or i can live large and show people in my neighborhood that i made it so i'm willing to just give y'all cupcake stuff and make you shout and scream. And if you sweat and stink, you feel like you've been to church. But no demons will be cast out. And no, nobody will get healed. 
and nobody will come up in the majority. Nobody will have experiences. And no one in the audience will begin to walk like Jesus. They'll just walk like they pastors. And that's where we are. So let's lift our hands. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us to ignore time. I was debating was I supposed to, to say. Well, some of y'all know I say God always used Jeremiah for me. And again, it happens. When Satan come in, I finished the class last night and Satan attacked me. So I felt the kind of coming on, but I prayed. And then I woke up this morning. I, I couldn't sleep. I was in just so much pain. This side on my right side on my neck. And um, I was telling Antoinette, you know, I could barely move. And I kept contemplating, should I come to church? Should I stay home? It was just worn in my mind. And she said, I feel like you need to go to church. I kind of sensed it, but I wasn't for sure. I get in the room, and the Lord spoke to me three times, very verbatim and plainly. Get dressed, go to church. Oh, Lord, I'm in so much pain. Get dressed, go to church. Get dressed, go to church, he said it three times. So I'm struggling getting dressed to put lotion on. Everything was just pain, pain, pain. And I come and I said, Lord, I know there's some type of attack. It's something you want me to know. But just in case, please make sure that I'm good with you. So anything I said or done, Lord, forgive me. Even if I'm guilty by association. Because mm. sometimes you can be guilty. People even clash you with people you ain't got nothing to do with it. Put you in things you don't have nothing to do with. But then when you hear about it, then me, I take offense because I'm feeling away. And the Lord let me know, you got to let it go. So this is what he told me to tell you all. Don't be moved by this time because you don't know how much time you have. Mm. But this is what he said. He said, you represent me as Jeremiah in these end times. So your flesh will experience things you cannot understand. Mm. So he said, even in the midst of the body of Christ, I'm speaking to you. Were you in pain when your children won't obey? When you and your husband not on good speaking terms, things just not moving the way that you should, you think it should. God told me to tell you to get dressed. Get dressed with the nine fruits of the spirit. Get dressed with those beatitudes. Get dressed. I heard this in class and they were saying it and it did not stick. It was somebody's word, but it's for everybody. Get dressed with the gifts of the Spirit. And then I heard God tell me to tell you, but it came to me first. You are powerful. You can't quit. Amen. You are powerful. You can't quit. You are powerful. You can't quit. Kings never quit. Amen. They obey me. They obey me. So even when the pain hurts, even when they talk about you, obey him. Get dressed. You in a war. Get dressed. Look at your armor. 
Whatever holds this in your arm and sew it up with the word of God. Shine it with the blood of Jesus. You in a war, get dressed. Kings don't quit. They obey God. Amen. Amen. Give amen. God praise. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to encourage you all. You know, we're going to do our best, of course, to do things within a certain time frame. But this is the thing y'all got to remember. Heaven does not respond to our time. There's some of us, you all, we've been around for a while with this ministry for 10 years. You got to get used to me saying things that you already know. Because the people, some others don't know. We have to get used to times. You know, I was just standing right here. There's going to be times, y'all, the church service will go to 2 o'clock. And it'll be intercession. It'll be turned into things. And, you know, what's alarming is the amount of angels that are appearing to men more and more. Saying the very thing that she's saying. Because you remember what Jesus said? He said, in the last days, many would depart from the faith. When they depart, it puts more weight on the ones who didn't. And it was very interesting about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a very emotional prophet. They actually nicknamed Jeremiah the crying prophet. So don't be surprised in the last days you spend a lot of time crying in prayer. It's you, you feel the weight of what is wrong. You, you, that, that, and that is not a feeling you, that you want to, it's not a good feeling. It's very, de it's very depressing to be honest with you. It's very depressing because it's God asking you to share the burden of what he feels. And he loves the people more than you do. And so, uh, so just, you know, but there is a spirit on the culture right now that's trying to get the sons to quit. I never thought I would feel that. But there was something that came on me about two, three weeks ago or so. I have never felt that since I have been saved. Where every part of my being, from the hair follicles down to the toenails, wanted me to walk away. I was like, what is this? It's impossible for me to walk away. But it's not impossible for you to feel it 100%. That thing was so strong. And you got to take those as cues of not weakness, but cues of strength. What am I doing that is so important that requires you to visit me, Satan? What is being accomplished that we can't see that you are in my household causing trouble with my children? You snuck into my marriage or ah, you didn't try to place a sickness on me and I'm getting trouble at work. The business can. What am I doing that requires your attention? You ain't doing nothing that doesn't require their attention. And let me tell you something. You got to be on edge. You got to be on guard. Because there's a mentality you can have. Because I'm live right. Everything is cool. Yes, yeah, cool between you and God, but it ain't cool between you and Satan. You driving down the street, and, and Satan got a whole team of people, <laughs> like Batman and the Joker, driving behind the street around you. Do something. And you ever felt, like I said, you driving 80, but it feels like 40? Driving 30, but it feels like 90? And you ever had the sensation you're driving down the street and it just feels like there's an invisible force trying to make every car crash into you. Stuff is real, but you blow it off because I can't see it. Okay, so hallelujah. These are the things that the Lord is going to prepare us for because we got to walk in dominion, you all. It is unreal. Okay, so Let's lift our hands for a moment before we dismiss. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone just bow their head. And if we're going to be just praying the Spirit for just a moment while we do, if you're here and you're not saved or you need to rededicate your life to Christ, you don't have to go to a person's altar. Just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. You have to say it. You can whisper it, but you have to say it. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sin. Ask Jesus to come into your life. Thank him for forgiving you and cleansing you from unrighteousness. And thank him that you are saved and your name is in the book of life. With God, forgiveness is simple. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. For those that may be saying their prayer here or online, 
as they open up their mouth, oh Lord God. And as for forgiveness, you are changing them on the inside. As they ask to be saved, you have come into their heart right now. You have saved them, forgiven them, and they no longer have a past. They have a glorious future. Cover them, O oh Lord God, with the right people. Release angelic protection now because all of your children have divine bodyguards. Mature them, O oh Lord God, and bring them up to speed very fast. And we thank you, Lord God, for giving us the grace to commit and to be faithful and to be diligent and not fall by the wayside. Pray, O oh Lord God, that these things that have been shared on today would be mighty seeds that will grow up into great trees to give us dominion over all things. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that if death has no victory over us, then surely nothing else does. Thank you, Lord God, for doing these things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, glory to God, hallelujah. It'll be the ones you don't want to come to that'll be the strongest sometimes because what we're moving over into I mean it they the the attacks that I'm getting because of Wednesday night it just it's encouraging but at first it was just like man that thing was so strong I mean it's like the sensation of being sick wanting to throw up being angry because they all come at you so you get all of the feelings at the same time and they gotta you know I, I'm not I'm gonna assume that some of you too particularly ones that may come pray even if you don't they coming after you whether you're early morning prayer whether you just breathing but I get a little bit harder because we got to get that head out the way. If we can, you know, so yes, it is true that they're trying to kill me. And it's true. This is not a problem. They're supposed to be trying to kill you. You know, so, all righty. So we just, so thank God, you know, gives, you know, it, it looks like we will, uh, it looks like we have our Sunday location. And so uh, we've been working on that. And so, uh, you know, there are things that the Lord can reserve for you. It's just amazing. And so, uh, but we'll keep you posted on all of that. So I don't have any announcements. If I do, I forgot them anyway. If you want to be baptized, you know, send us an email. If you want to take the spiritual growth class, if you're here, you've only been here for like the last three to four months, you want to take the spiritual growth class, let us know. And um, I'll send you a text for um, what, uh, what else we're doing. Oh, I, I think next Friday we're doing a, it's a, it's a, um, a music concert. Daniel, one of the worship leaders at the Sunday location, He's doing a, uh, a live recording, I think, with six songs. So I'll send you all a text as a reminder. If you want to come on and support him on Friday night, that will be here on Friday night. He's going to do a live recording. So you need an audience to hype it up. So if you're not doing anything, or if you are, come on out. But like I said, we'll send you a reminder text for that. You know, think it's Saturday. What did I say? Ooh-wee. I'm not anointed for announcements. Okay. It's Saturday. Yeah, it's on Saturday, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, now you understand why I'm gonna send you a text. Okay. So, all right. Let's lift our hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the things that we have heard, learned, and experienced on today. Thank you for manifestation and the word you said, O oh Lord God, that they were healed as they went. So we thank you that some were healed immediately; others will be healed as they walk outside this building. Thank you, Lord God, for grace and favor on today. Thank you, O Lord God, for being our joy and our strength. Thank you, Lord God. I pray for every person here that you would just give them favor this weekend. Do something for this group, O Lord God, and those that are watching online. Do something for them that will give them joy and put a smile on their face. Thank you, Lord God, for doing this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. If you're a first-time visitor, come introduce yourself to me for a moment. When y'all go to Children's Church, make sure y'all give them a hug, a high five, or $5 to go get some McDonald's. <laughs> I better leave that fast food.